Hi, everybody. How's it going? <laughs> hey. Hey. Uh, sorry for the uh, little bit late, late start, but it, it, I got distracted because uh, I'm managing my my kids or my daughter's cell phone, and oh. I had to like manage like downtime stuff. It's like it's endless. It is endless. Oh, it's, it's crazy. It's more it's more complicated than than just enforcing like tablet screen time or whatever. I mean, it's it's similar. But yeah. there's, you know, there's like, uh, like messages and texting and stuff like that. There's a little bit more mm. to have to have to manage, I guess. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm like kind of surprised that like, I don't know, like I, I kind, I mean, as someone who whose path does not often cross with kids, like I, I kind of expected that like texting was going to start to become an old person's thing. Oh no! I mean, there's there's a lot of it. I mean, especially with like group texts and stuff. See, I figured they would just use whatever their preferred chat app would would be like, or or whatever. Uh, I mean, you know, did she not talk to friends like with her tablet or whatever? Yeah, but I mean, they're all like, uh, you know, uh, they just have like group text messages. I guess that's just like easier for them than then like have to create a profile on something else. Yeah. I don't know. I just, I, I, I don't know. I just, I, I, I've long had the sense that, that like, you know, like, Oh, texting's going to be, you know, the next, you know, you know, you the know, th- next Facebook, thing to go, you know, for a while there where Facebook was like, you know, everyone had to be on Facebook and then it just became for old people. And I, I kind of thought texts yeah. were like on, on the, that was just, that was just me guessing. It. <laughs> Apparently I'm wrong. Yeah, I mean, it's just, I don't know. Like, it, it's just a whole thing to have to manage. And I, like, I don't know. I'm just, like, so sick of, like, being, like, a, like managing this stuff. I just had to get my mom, because she used our Netflix account. And I had to get her, add her as a as a, a, an extra user. And it's, like, oh, a whole like thing. Oh, like, as a family member, so that it makes yeah. sense. So, so they, they officially... Like oh yeah, I think they and rolled. Start enforcing that. Yeah, I mean they rolled it out. Like I want to say in July, maybe beginning okay. of July, like late June. But it was, I don't know. It was just, <laughs> walking her through everything is uh, not not very fun because no, you know we did it one time and then we had to. D- it didn't go right, so uh, it stopped oh. working and then we had to redo it. Oh. Um. But um, I'm I'm going on a little trip for work on Tuesday to Friday. Um, oh, so I don't want to like realize. start any. Uh, I don't know. Like I just felt like playing something kind of, kind of relaxing, and you yeah. know, like as I've been going through and making a lot of these old live streams, uh, I guess like public, like unofficially public. Uh, I saw. I came across the one stream that you did when you played Final Fantasy two. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like last year or something. That was fun. Yeah, mm. yeah. So I, I got all the way through Cecil becoming a paladin. Yeah, I think that gives you a good, um, I don't know, just like a good like point to hit in a stream. You know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not like I continued that run or not that I even went into it with any intention to, but it was just like. You know, it was just 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 fun to have a little yeah. little taste of that game. I hadn't played in a while, you know. It was yeah, it was fun to see how far. And you're going to be doing a new game plus, so yeah. If you remember your way about, you could in theory be getting kind of far. Yeah, I, I mean, it's been a little while since I've done it, so I probably will need some refreshers. But although I'm sure people in the chat will be like, oh, you go here. I'm just going to be, you know, I'm going to be playing. I guess I'll switch over to the game. Yeah, I mean, I. I don't think I've played all the way through Chrono Trigger since. I mean, I don't think I've played through it since, bef- like after I did that that you know twenty four hour Final Fantasy VI run. Yeah. So I'm gonna do a new uh, pain plus from my childhood save, right here. Uh, it's just I, I'm kind of annoyed, I, like. It, it used to annoy annoy me to no end that it would always have their names in all caps, 
Like I hated it that it did that in this, and I hated it that it did it in Final oh. Fantasy Three. So I made so it. You renamed them. Yeah, I just rename them, you know, with like, you know, just only the first letter capitalized. Mm. But now I kind of am annoyed that, that it's that I did that. So this is I'm playing on my my childhood cart, and uh, I'm gonna do a, a new game plus from my. Have you ever had to replace this battery? I've I've replaced it. Yes. I mean, I I caught it and backed up my save before I lost it, and I just did it to yeah have it so I didn't have to worry about it. So we'll do the, that. The, the backflash was asking me try love hate Chrono Trigger. I mean, does anyone hate Chrono Trigger? It's 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 hard to say. It's hard to say. I'm sure there's people out there that they're like, oh, it's just so basic. Or they're like, you know, it doesn't live up to the hype. But I don't know. I, I think as time goes on, I just appreciate it more and more because it's just, oh, yeah. it's so, the pacing like, there's like, just perfect. the pacing is so good. There's no fat to it. It's just, you know, and I, I love, I, I mean, obviously, like, I love time travel stuff, but I love, like, uh, you know, like, they kill, like, the main character and then they, like, do, and they swap them. Not to spoil anything, but it, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> there may be spoilers in this stream. Yes. Uh, I'm sure. Um, I mean, you know, this this was the game that cemented me as an RPG fan. Yeah, I could I could certainly see that maybe. because I, I didn't I didn't play it right away like you did. Like you were already yeah, I mean, an RPG fan. In, in the thumbnail is a photo of, if, like, that's my childhood copy. I'm playing on my childhood copy. Uh, and I got I got the day it came out. And so I, someone, like, said, oh, does that, does this still have the registration card? And, yeah, it has the registration card. It has two maps. It has the, the manual. And it has the two, like, other inserts, like the Nintendo Power insert. <laughs> I, I, uh... Uh, I, I I have a couple of super chats to do, but oh. but first I, I <laughs> this, this this comment from 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 the handsome cow, <laughs> which is which is an entertaining username and of itself. Uh, but this comment says, at most people who don't like it are just indifferent, unless they have a hard rule against time travel in media. I have a friend like that, and like the idea of like like I can understand like being annoyed by like certain time travel rules mm -hmm. but yeah. uh but it, it kind of i it, it kind of cracks me up to think like someone's just like no time travel stories like time travel always bad <laughs> always <laughs> like t time travel is like one of you know, especially when done well, it's like one of the most entertaining kind of, of stories you can make, honestly. You know? Yeah. Hang on, I'm just... Um, Auto attack. But anyway, um, uh, there was, uh, first up from Jonathan Henson. Saying, uh, my cowboys are playing tonight and you are streaming Chrono Trigger. Corey, <laughs> why do you hate me? <laughs> well, I mean, I just thought it was fun. It would be fun to do something like this. Well, I don't know. So, let's see it. Let's see how so, well so, I do. Sorry, Jonathan. <laughs> yeah, sorry. And I'm not gonna like tool around. I'm just gonna, yeah. Oh, yeah, just go for it. Just see how far you can get. Like, that's that's what. I mean, I've wanted to do more streams like this. You know, I was thinking about doing it with Mario RPG until, you know, they, they announced the remake. Um, you know, so. Yeah. Uh, but anyway. Oh, wait, wait, before I go to the next one, I have to watch what Corey's going to do here. What? And not, nothing, nothing. You're just wondering what I'm doing, like, how, like the order that yeah, I do it. I'm just gonna watch your screen for. Oh, you got the pendant first. <laughs> do you do you remember? Do you remember that that has an impact? I don't remember. I mean, it's so minor, but uh, there will be a witness 
in the trial that oh, says okay. that says like I saw he he went and got the pendant before he even checked if she was okay. He was just in it for the money. <laughs> <laughs> I, do, I don't remember. I mean, it's kind of interesting how the game, the game does really front load like a lot of those little details that like really make a, a big impact later, you know, because the trial isn't that far into the game. Uh, right. So it, it really does kind of like front load like those kinds of things. Like, I mean, there's lots of other interesting things that it does, of course, but uh, I, I think those were those were kind of ambitious ideas at the time. And so it kind of feels like they really tried it, but then like later on they were just like ah making all these threads tied together would be too too <laughs> uh start to get too complicated. Um But anyway, there was also Five dollar super chat from Dad One One Five Three. Thank you. Saying Chrono Trigger football season's on, so Imlig's rolling big gun counter programming. <laughs> Only version of Chrono Trigger I've played is the PS One version. Well, you know the PS One version does have really long pauses before battles start, which is really yeah. annoying. But I pl I've played all the way through that version. Really? Uh, as well. I've never been able to do it. Uh, well, I want to unlock all the goodies and stuff, you know? Um, I mean, the anime scenes are pretty neat. Um, although the one, the one thing that's weird about the anime scenes is they reproduce things that happen with, like, the sprite-based yeah but so, does it like does it take the place of it no it does not take the place of it so it's it's kind of weird in that sense where you you see it play out twice right like, immediate you see the same thing happen twice so it's a little strange but they are cool scenes and you can like after you finish the game you can i'm pretty sure you can like go back and oh did i look just, at them all again let's go to the end of the time here and just did I just screw it up? <laughs> oh, yeah. I just screwed it up. You just screwed it up. You screwed it up. <laughs> You're fighting Lavos now. Should I, just, should I try to beat it? Uh, I mean, you're like level... I mean, your HP is like 99 and stuff. It's going to be so easy. It's, it's kind of like, what's the point? Yeah. Oh, you're just... You're, oh, I mean, you're just... I did forget you're just uh, Chrono. Yeah. But it's still probably going to be, like, way too easy on New Game Plus. Like, I, I I would say, I would say reset. Okay. Or or just let them kill I mean, I can... <laughs> I think it might be fun to just try. Uh, do what you want to do. <laughs> I, I remember being really surprised when I found out this was possible. I was like, wait, could you have done that the first time? And you can't. Like, I, I, I don't, I could be wrong, but I think most of the, of like the, the weird endings, like you can't even get until you've beaten the game in some normal fashion. I had it uh, previously. Some of them you might be able to get, but, um, but anyway, uh, also, Dad one one five three. I didn't know that. I didn't know that football season was on. So yeah, you, it must start today. You've, I think. You've, you've taught me something. <laughs> um, there was also a twenty dollars super chat from Tinder Brew. Thank you. Thank you. Saying, "Hey, dudes, great pick. I replayed this last year, and it was amazing to relive it again. All hail the max thirty hour SNES RPG. All killer, no filler. Glad I get get to catch it. Heck yeah." Um, I mean, as I, as I was saying, was starting to, to starting to say his Corey was getting going. Oh, I'm going to die. <laughs> I mean, do you have elixirs? You probably have elixirs. Yeah, but it's got me before I could, that ATB got me. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. So 
at, at the time, um, <laughs> I, uh, I, I'd really only played Mario RPG and Pokemon. And, you know, I'd watched a friend play Final Fantasy 2, uh, 2, 4, and 6. I'd watched a friend play a good chunk of those. I'd watched him play, uh, you know, parts of like Lufia 2 and uh, Breath of Fire. And I, I just did not think RPGs were for me. But mm. I got into Mario RPG and Pokemon, but I thought that was like all I was interested in. Um, and then that friend moved away and he was telling me like, oh, you know, you got to try this game Chrono Trigger. And like the N64 and PS1 were already out. Like this yeah. was probably like 2000 um, or maybe 90. Uh, no, 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 no. It was earlier than that. It was probably, it was probably 98 or 99. It was probably 98 or 99. And you know, so he was like, oh, you got to play this. It's it's amazing. And I saw that, like, a used copy of Funko Land was, like, 75 bucks already. So it was like... Let's try that again. Uh, I got to stick with names again. Like, I was like, oh, man, like... I mean, at the time, it's not like that Cromo. was that much more than a new game. But the idea of, like... I almost named him Cromo. <laughs> Cromo. <laughs> I kind of wish that I had now. <laughs> um but yeah so <laughs> so i was like i was like I, uh, do i know, reset I and re do i should i reset and name him chromo no no <laughs> no but anyway um so uh Come on, uh, I gotta do it. It's, it'll be too funny. I don't. It's like it's okay, so stupid, okay. It's so stupid that I gotta do it. <laughs> you gotta do it, and this will be this will be on your cart forever. Now. Yes. <laughs> anyway, so I was like, uh, I don't know. I don't think I'm going to be able to get into any RPGs other than Mario RPG and Pokemon. It was like, oh, it's so good. It's so good. I think you'll really like it. And so I said, okay, well, I'll tell you what, like a friend of mine had Final Fantasy seven and I was like, I, I'll, I'll play like the first few hours. Of that. And if I like that, then I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll get Chrono Trigger. Okay. And, uh, you know, so, I mean, you know, buying that was in lieu of buying, you know, a new N64 <laughs> game or something. Right. Like, cause it was, it was expensive. <laughs> Even, you know, just to get a, a used cart. It was, you know, it was more than, a, it was a little bit more than a new game at that time. And so, <laughs> Chromo, good morning, Chromo. Um, <laughs> now you have to name all the characters something just Yeah, just like, like one, one letter, letter has to be, like the letter that's before it. Yeah, like only yeah. one letter. So like we got to figure it out. Okay, but it has to be. It has to. It can't just be like like you know you you can't like get rid of like a like a a, a, a vowel. Or right. Something. Well, it's got to be. I know. Well, no, it's got to be. Uh, like Luca is gonna be. I is gonna. Hang on. I already know what Luca is gonna be. <laughs> Luda. <laughs> Luda. Luda. Well, wait, wait. Are you doing? Are you doing? Uh, but, 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 wait, 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 wait. You, 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 you changed two letters. Well, I guess if it's adjacent letters, yes. you can do the same adjacent letter. Okay. <laughs> Luba. You know, I kind of wish I'd done Luba. Kinda funny, because that that makes her sound like a ludite, which yeah. is like someone who's like technology. <laughs> I'm, I'm birth, thinking right? ludicrous. What? Well, <laughs> but like, it's funny because she is like. She, she's the inventor, but her name sounds like Ludite. <laughs> anyway. So anyway, I, I played like the first few hours of Final Fantasy VII on my friend's PS1. I'm like, okay, I, I think I get Restart this. for Luba. I, I, I can't do this restart for Luba. 
I do kind of want to do Luba. I kind of wish. I mean, Luba would be kind of fun. You said it has to be one. Did you say it has to be the letter next to it? Does it have to be the letter before it? No, or what? Well, not necessarily. But was was C next? I mean, it was after. I, guess I just like. I mean, you can't. I mean, <laughs> everyone's saying it's, it's got to be Luba. I I'm okay with Luba. <laughs> I'm okay with, with it being Luba. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I like Luba is like is way better. <laughs> Luba. <laughs> okay, okay, all right. We're doing but, it again. Whatever you come up with for Marl, make sure you're really happy with it. All right. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, so I was like, all right, I'll get Chrono Trigger. Got that used copy of Tr Chrono Trigger from Funko Land. Was like, oh so my gosh, the third letter amazing. has to be the 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 third letter of the name. If it's if it's the same name or the same letter, then it can be the same thing. Like Luba, should it be L U B B A or L U B A? I think I think you have to you have to keep if it's a J, it, it, the the name has to be the same length as the original. Okay. So if it's double letters, which I think Luca would be the only example anyway. Um, if it, you know, it, it, yes. <laughs> I, I do like Luba. Luba is like is pretty funny. So anyway, or actually, would it be if it's two B's? Is it Luba? It it could be Luba, but I'm gonna. I just no way that I'm not gonna say Luba. I'm sorry. Even <laughs> if it's. <laughs> I mean, Luba is pretty good too. Yeah, Luba is. Yes. But Luba, Luba's good. So what, what what I want to know is, like, how many times is there going to be a battle scene with these character names <laughs> appearing in future videos now? I, well, I feel like I could uh, do it a lot if I wanted to. <laughs> Tromo. It's... Anyway. Tromo so, yes, I got Crow Trigger, loved it. The rest is history. Love RPGs. Um, I, I mowed lawns all, all summer and, uh, pre-ordered it at Electronics Boutique. Mm. Got it there. But anyway, there was, uh, a, also a $2 super chat from Aaron Welsh saying, love you guys. This message will never be read. Lol. <laughs> well, untrue, sir. Untrue. Ah, uh, I just, you know. We got very distracted by Chromo and 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 Luba. <laughs> there was also okay. See, the Q doesn't oh. work for it, the R, so it's got to be. It it be it be Mockle, Mockle, or 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 Mazel. Maisel, uh, M A. Uh, what gnarl? Nar gnarl? Maple, <laughs> Markle, Narkle, Nar gnarl. Maple, Ma Maple. <laughs> Merle. My, uh, my name is Mer Malva, Merle. I I do, I do kind of like Merle. Um, but you can't do you can't do that because the letters has to have I to know. be adjacent. I, I kind of like Marm. Marl. Uh, uh, Mark. <laughs> um, Narl. yeah, it could be Ma Marl. Only like one letter can go either way. So what about what about what about Marm? Marm. I kind of like I kind of like Marm. <laughs> Marm, I do like Marm. <laughs> All right. <laughs> like, okay. Marm is good. I like <laughs> Chromo and Marm. <laughs> Marm. Chromo? What a nice. <laughs> Chromo and Sayama. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha. 
<laughs> oh man. Anyway, uh, we got five Canadian from Sebastian. Thank you. Saying, have you tried the new retranslation of Chrono Trigger for SNES? I think it came out a few days ago. Uh, is, 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 is Corey's new names? Is that not the new translation? <laughs> uh, no, I was not aware of that. I mean, I, you know, I, 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 I have a big soft spot for, for old Ted Woolsey myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'd rather just play this honestly, because I bet a lot of people might've thought since that was new, maybe you would be playing it, but I, I did not know about it. Like I, like I, you know, like like for example, right now I'm playing Luna. Luva's device. Um, and you know, boy oh boy, you know, <laughs> working designs, man. It's uh, old, old Vic Ireland's uh, translation style is not really for me. Really, but uh, I I understand though, like why you loved it at the time and why it had the impact on so many people that it did. Mm -hmm. Like it hasn't aged well, but I think, but at the time you know, when it they came were out, by, huh? But at the time it came out, it at was the time it came out. And also for the, the audience mm -hmm. that games were directed towards at that time, because, you know, nowadays it's much more common to have, you know, you know, middle-aged adults and stuff, you know, playing games because we grew up on it. At the time, it was much younger people. And when I was that age, like, there was nothing funnier than referential humor. Mm -hmm. You know? Like, oh, I know. Like, that was, that yeah. was so funny. Right, right. Uh, and I, if I had played those games at that time, I probably would have thought it was funny to see, like, references to Wheaties and M&Ms and Tootsie Pop commercials. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, but I mean, like, for me, it was, I always say this, is that it was the first game that I felt like it they were, like, real people talking. Like, right. they talk like they, real people more so than any other RPG I'd played at the time. And, of course, it was, that's, like, real people by, like, modern standards, right? Yes. Or, or contemporary standards. Exactly. So they didn't, so, you know, the thing is, like, you know, every line I read in the game, like... You know, I, I am not, like, a, a literal translation guy. Like, you know, localization is supposed to, you know, capture the spirit of what was said in a way that translates not just across language, but also across culture, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, it you know, if a joke or something doesn't make sense, even if you, you know, brush up the translation, like, you need to have an equivalent joke or an equivalent analogy or an equivalent reference you know uh it may not be the exact same one but you know so uh you know i i, I don't you know i'm not like on the the literal translation bandwagon by any means but in working designs games in particular i feel like i look at uh I, 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 I look at every line with a great deal of suspicion. <laughs> like, I bet this has absolutely nothing to do with what was originally said. <laughs> yeah, but it, I don't feel like any of the story is lost. No, that, like yes. the story, I'm sure, the main story, I'm sure. Is, and I think they, especially in, in this case, I do think that they treat like the main story stuff probably more seriously than just like random NPCs in town. You know, mm -hmm. so even though I could play the unworked designs and I would probably personally like the translation more like I it just it still feels important to me to experience that yeah, working absolutely. designs translation because that is what happened that that is yeah. that is and to have like that we, context for it, you know, exactly to... like why would I from my point of view why would I play the unworked designs version without understanding the working designs version? Right? Yes. Like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like I would want to know, I want the context for why am I playing that version? You know? Yeah. So who knows? Maybe someday, but you know, I, I, and at least it's unlike the, I, I don't remember if this is 
just if it's Lunar one and two or just one of them on Sega CD, but like there's the whole like magic point saving. Oh yeah, system. I mean this like, but like what what shocked me about um, what shocked me about uh, the PS one version is you, is you can save anywhere. It's so forgiving. Yeah. Oh, Chris V says Unwork Designs doesn't have different translations. It just reverses difficulty changes and puts text in mixed case. Oh, I I assumed it like at the very least like got rid of like anachronistic references and stuff like that. I thought it got rid of like little things like that, but maybe it doesn't. I mean, yeah, I, like I, I I don't I I am not bothered at all by the translation at all. But I always said that I think that the place that it works the best is in Potful Mail because it really works with the like the feel of that game mm -hmm. and the uh, just kind of goofiness of it, all of it. Yeah, yeah, I think that I think that makes a lot of sense. I mean, you know, it, it's but but I, I put on my gold stud. While while I think working designs like went a little too far, I do think it was important at that time to for there to be a company out there who was doing what it was doing, who was, was, you know, going and getting these, these games that would otherwise never be released in English mm -hmm. and, you know, pushing forward localization and like, like pushing it really far forward in ways that like, you know, they, they were pushing the envelope in good ways and bad ways. And, yeah. you know, if they hadn't done that, like, how would we have learned how to what works and what doesn't, right? Yeah, like, exactly. I, I think I think even even the things that they did that didn't work, I think were still important. You know yes. what I mean? Like 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 because someone had to do it to figure out. Like, like oh, that. or you know, people had to figure it out to say like, okay, so this is too far. Because you know, you look at the first lunar and it only has a couple of little things in there, right? A couple of little mm. references here and there, and it's not like it's not major. Uh, yeah. But they they saw the reaction to that, and it kind of escalates over time. Mm. And I don't remember what it was the worst in. Was it was it people who said that uh, so like Albert Odyssey was kind of ruined by it, and uh, that might have been like the main, ruined by the, what by the translation. Oh. And I think that after that, they kind of uh, roll back a little bit. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so I mean, it, I, I think I think the 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 missteps were were good lessons learned for the whole industry. Yes. Honestly. Like so, I mean, it's I, I I really appreciate that they did what they did at the time that they did it. I think we're I think we probably got to a better place sooner because of their work. And. Um, you know, also, like, I was thinking about it when I was playing, like, is Working Designs the only game publisher that ever, like, had, like, an identity of its own? Like, you think of something like Nintendo or Sega, like, you know, they are making and publishing their own games. But, like, someone who is a publisher who takes other developers' games and releases them in a, another region. Like, are they the only company like that that really had that kind of personality attached to them? Where it's like, At the time, you know what to expect from a working designs game. Like, they put their own mark on it for, for better or worse, you know? Yeah. Like, you know, you you know, Atlas and Xseed later became known for doing similar things to what they did, but I don't think that they left a mark on their on their games and you know probably intentionally so they probably intentionally avoid doing exactly what work yes but you know it, like like companies like Xseed I feel like really picked up and carried the torch a bit oh yeah um, Xseed has been like so far off my radar for so yeah long it's now. it's it's weird like how they've well I mean once once they lost the Falcom around. stuff they really were yeah. like not very much into my area of interest anymore unfortunately well and also i think i think uh, you know 
Exceed was kind of the last major company that was really doing that, like, you know, as a, a very well-known publisher, because I think people started to get the idea that, hey, Japanese stuff sells. And, mm -hmm. you know, like, stuff by and large is, you know, getting translated these days. People realize, like, there's a, there's a market for this, right? Um, but anyway, anyway, enough rambling about that. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's get back on the super chats. I'm falling way behind. Sorry about that. Uh, there was, there was a 199 from Astral Color saying, all hail Chromo. <laughs> Chromo. And, uh, um, <laughs> uh, and there was also a 199 from Madonna. She, he's saying, saying, L Luba and Chubbins crossover? I'm waiting. <laughs> <laughs> Luba. Or, or or is that Luba? I don't I don't I don't I don't know. It's, it's, it's gonna be I, Luba. I, I can't it can't. Well I don't I, I don't know I don't know which side of that Madonna Sheehy falls on. Um but <laughs> I like could I could just imagine like 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 Luca's like disembodied head just like being a character in, in Chubbins. <laughs> just bouncing around um there was also a five dollar super chat from captain swag thank you oh, thank you Saying we've barely started the game and i'm already in stitches if i see any b-roll of this in future videos i'm gonna chuckle every time <laughs> <laughs> oh it's gonna happen it's gonna happen maybe i can get Corey to record a uh uh, a, a, a sample of, of this on like the retro tank 5x and compare it against the <laughs> uh compare against the 4x or something or the 4k excuse me <laughs> um uh, uh there was also a five real from uh guillerme susa thank you thank you Saying Chrono Trigger, but every time you start a new game, you have to change one additional letter from everyone's names. Like, wouldn't it be so funny to, to like distort that over multiple runs? Yes, and just hit, you know every new game plus. You mean? Would be kind of every funny. new game plus. So like you could you could change a different letter, or you could change the same letter, and you would have access to like the letter one further to the right or one further to the left. That, that would be fun. Um, uh, and Madonna Sheehy has clarified Lubba as in Chubbins. <laughs> um, there's also a $2 Super Chat from Aaron Welsh saying, by the way, this is how Corey named his little ones. <laughs> yes. Are, are, are they in all caps too? <laughs> I I wish. Like, I wonder if it's even <laughs> legal to do that. <laughs> I mean, like, how do you? I how would you go about doing that? I don't know. It would probably be a paperwork nightmare. <laughs> yes. Um, there was also five dollars super chat from the gaming nostalgist. Thank you. Thank you. Um who actually messaged me earlier today saying, evening guys, try. I'm really excited to show you the Vita dev kit. And yes, you can mention it here. Uh, yeah, so I was talking uh, to him earlier today and he was like, oh, I thought of like, I don't know how far along you are on the Retro Team 4K episode, but I thought of something uh, really cool for you to test with it. And he's got a Vita dev kit. Oh. Which has like, you know, HDMI output and stuff. Oh, I see. Um, can you load like, like real know, cartridges like, on it? Huh? Can you load actual cartridges on it? He says it's it's modded in some way to be able to play retail cards. Interesting. Um, so anyway, I I was like, well, that's really interesting, but I think for the 4K video specifically, like that would just be like too far of a left turn. Like, mm -hmm. just you know, it, it it would be too out of line with the other. You know, we're not showing anything like super unusual uh, on it. Um, so <laughs> there's just like, like the Retro Tank 4K is like, 
honestly like a, a wealth of content and everyone of here calls me like, lean. I, 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 I feel like everyone, um, I, I, I feel like, you know, we, we could test all sorts of things with it for years and years and years and come up with all sorts of subjects. So I, I said like, you know, that's really cool. And I definitely would like to do something with a Vita dev kit sometime, but I think like it, for one, it could be interesting enough to be its own video, kind of like you did sharp scale, you know, just, but except obviously not people, a lot of people could use it, but it, it'd just be interesting. It'd just be an interesting thing to look at. Someone oh, help me. Um, or, you know, it could be part of, you know, RGB 200 <laughs> PSP and Vita. I've been intending to get to it for years. Um, so yeah, that's definitely something we would like to look at, uh, sometime. So, uh, thank you, uh, so much for bringing it to my attention that you have one and, uh, we'd, we'd love to try it out and test it with stuff sometime. Um, so yeah, remind, remind me about that, like early next year. Uh, and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll try to work it in. Um, so yeah, and then there was a 499 from old Dingus Glart. Thank you. Old Dingus. Old Dingus Glart. Saying, uh, when I played this first, I thought you could only save on the sparkly spots. Took me a long time. Well, you know, this was this was also I I I might have not known that at first either. I think I learned it at some point during my first playthrough. Had you played, so you hadn't played Final Fantasy 3 at this point? Well, I had watched a friend play it, but right. yeah, I wasn't familiar with the conventions of right, you can right. save on the world map. Yeah. Um, you know, so, yes. Yeah, so after I after I played this was when I played Final Fantasy 6 VI and 7 VII and 4 and stuff like that. Uh, Bowie uh, says, wait, what? You, how else can you save again? You can save on the world map at any time, like the overworld. It's just like, yeah, like Final you just, Fantasy was. You just go to, you access it through the, the main menu. Yeah. You know, you don't. It, it was very strange to me. It's like, oh, okay, if you're standing here, then save becomes available in the main menu. And if you're not standing here. <laughs> Is Bowie going to say, I never knew that? I'm waiting for it. <laughs> I'm hoping. <laughs> I mean, you know, it, it, it definitely became like a, a Final Fantasy mainstay, and this takes a lot from Final Fantasy. Like, this game is like, I mean, it literally is like, you know, it's like it's Sakaguchi and and um, Yuji Horii teaming yeah. up, right? Like, like this is th this game is like the best. This is like the best parts of Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest, like blended together. You know? Yeah. So am I supposed to leave? I forgot if I'm supposed to get out of there. Am I going oh, back? Ba in time? Bowie says, I think I only own the Steam version. Oh, okay. You know, a lot of people, you know, it's very common for people to say that the, uh, the, the DS version is the best. Um, and I, I'm sure it has like a lot of, I, I forget the details. I'm sure I want to do like, you know, it's got, you know, it's got a bit of a, a retranslation, at least in parts. Like, I don't think frog says is the and thou anymore, which I'll admit is like a little weird. Cause it's not like everyone else in 600 AD speaks in these and vows, but still it's like, you know, it's fun. But again, you know, see, I, I was exposed to that at a younger age, just like you were exposed to the working designs right. translations at a younger age. So it's easier for you to accept it. And it's easier for me to accept, you know, some of the silly things like the like frogs, these and those, you know, because it's yeah. like, oh, come on, you know, it was, that was fine. what was wrong with that? <laughs> um, but. Uh, oh, man, we're, we're going to be naming frogs soon, actually. I don't remember if I'm supposed to go back. Am I supposed to go back? I, I don't think so. I think you're. I think you're supposed to go straight to the the um to the room, the, the cathedral, right? Like where all of the monsters are disguised as nuns. Oh, the church. Okay. 
Have you ever, have you ever, um, like done a run of an RP, like a second run of an RPG where a character who's like going by an alias and you like name them their true name? I mean, I've seen that done before. Like I, I did that a bunch. Like I would name Frog Glen. Yeah. Um, and, uh. Uh, Red 13, I'd name him Nanaki. Yeah. You know, <laughs> for, for, I don't know why, like, I have no problem with the name Robo now, but, like, I thought, I thought Robo, like, the first time I met Robo in this game, I was just like, that name is so stupid. <laughs> like I, I cannot I cannot have my robot named Robo. Like I just I I I I, I hate it. And uh like so I was like, what can I name him? Bot. And I, I like I, I kinda just like I took the bow at the end and I na I named him I named him Jimbo. Oh. <laughs> and for the longest time like that's kind of a silly name too, but like I liked it better than Robo. So for for many many runs of Chrono Trigger, my, my Robo was Jimbo. <laughs> Nanaki is Nanaki. Yeah, I I always think of that line. You know, I, like, well, I feel like Nanaki? I got a name Nanaki Robo Nanaki? Jimbo now in this game. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it just it just makes sense, Jimbo. <laughs> it's weird My it's God weird that doth not incur that thy trust <laughs> it's interesting that that frog's theme is like the victory theme in chrono cross no lucas theme is oh okay which yeah i don't like that like like it died, like it's always been lucas theme mm. and like why is it like it's just weird this diluted all right so what are, we, being... what are we calling him Oh well, we're gonna look at we're gonna look at those, that letter list and find out. Okay, he could be Arog, Grog. Grog. I do Grog. like Grog. Grog's pretty he good. Be, he could be Grog, but let's let's not be too hasty. Let's not be too hasty. He could be uh, Quag. That wouldn't work. Saw saw sog. <laughs> uh, I don't think replacing the O works. He could be Froth mm. or Fro. Fro. I, I don't know. I like Grog. I, I'm going to go with Grog. Yeah, I think, I think, I mean, Froth is pretty good, but I think, I think Grog. I think it's got to be Grog. Yeah. <laughs> Grog will do. <laughs> Please. Some people I don't think Grog. understand, understand our naming rules. It has to be a, we change one letter adjacent and it has to be an adjacent letter. Yes. So we we can't that that ma that makes uh uh that, that makes vowels tough to do. Grog. This is Robo and that is Jimbo. Okay, so uh, am I going back to? The I, I know you're you're going south. C can't you play the the? Don't you play the organ in there and it opens up the secret passage? Oh yes. I mean, I'm not reading it. I should probably read it. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm not reading too much of it either. But I'm just that's just my memory. Yeah. By the way, I always played. Um. Like, I, I've never done a run of this game, I'm pretty sure. I've never done a run of this game where I didn't make my text window the wood panel. Hmm. I mean, usually I like to go to, uh, like, the default. I don't I don't love the default in this, the, the gray slate. Yeah. Um... And, like, the blue, there's a blue one that I think is pretty close to Final Fantasy. So that's the one you... Yeah, I do like the wood. See, that's like good. I want, like I've that's always... the one I like. Like this is the one I'm gonna go. 
I just like the like the Final Fantasy style gradient. Like I like that too, but I've always avoided it just because it's like you know, like that's Final Fantasy. Yeah. But it's great. Oh, okay, maybe you don't have to play the organ to open up the door. I maybe did. That's I did. I, I played. Oh. It. Oh, wait, you're not playing with the Final Fantasy Blue. What? What is? I don't. No, it's don't it's like a gradient. It. It's a gradient, but it's it's gray. Isn't there a Final Fantasy Blue though? I don't think so. I think there is. You should check. But out it's not like the gradient. Uh, maybe it's more. Like, maybe it's kind of like the Final Fantasy Nine one, where it's not gradient, but it's just flat. But I mean, like Final see, Fantasy like, see, Four. I, there's is, there's a green flat. one that's slightly close, but I mean, this is the. Yeah, I see one of your saves is the green one. Yeah. Well, it, wait, that blue one is a gradient, isn't it? Go back. Yeah, it's got like a texture to it, though. But I look at seven, and that's like a Final Fantasy style gradient. I mean, you should do something that's a little different from your other. Yeah, I don't think I've ever used thing. seven. Yeah, I mean, that's actually a pretty cool one. I, yeah. I, I mean, that's the one I, I would actually I, like, I really go with. I got, yeah, the, the gradient was only in six at that point. Yeah. Um, We just got a notification that, that Scott Snyder has been a, a member for 37 months in a row. Thank you, and thank you for... Spent the last your, month your, going through live streams, I think, though. Yeah, thank you so much for your, your continued uh, dedication to that endeavor. Uh, that has been awesome. Uh, saying, hey, gents, looking forward to the room cool. tour and pink 4K episodes. What else do you have planned? I'm having a blast going through the old streams. <laughs> um, so um, I, I, I'm also going to do a quick video on um, the new uh, Super Nintendo mod that can sharpen up any Super Nintendo. Um, and, uh, well, I shouldn't say it can chopping up any Super Nintendo because I, it's it's not designed for one chip consoles. To my knowledge, anyway, I need to double check that with Voltar. Well, you would use a separate mod for one chip consoles and non one chip mm -hmm. consoles. But this is the first time you can finally sharpen up run of the mill non one chip consoles. Uh, so yeah, that'll be a uh, quick. I mean, I, I don't think there'll be much to say about it really, you know, other than the fact that just, hey, this exists. It, here's <laughs> what it looks like. Um, and, uh, but before any of that, um, I mean, so you, you've been, you know, teasing your room tour video for a while and kept saying like, oh, it's almost yeah. out, but we, we've, you're at a point with it where we do need to pivot to, uh, sort of a, a well, I think will be an interesting, but hopefully relatively quick and easy, yeah. uh, video on, uh, just because we we wanted to come up with kind of a just general interest subject that we could do for a video that we're going to put a, a sponsorship spot on. Yeah. Um, we tried so to like, we're going to. We just agreed to do one, and we had a certain day that we had to release it by. So. Uh, right, and we didn't we didn't want to attach it to anything that we're like testing or reviewing. Like we just right, wanted. or so, like I don't so, want to put it on my room. Video. Right, we don't want to put it on the room tour video. So we, we came up with a uh, video subject that will be, um, you know, the 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 gaming accessories that we actually use the most. Yeah, it's just like, like kind of a like, fun little thing. Just a, sort of a fun, fluffy, fluffy general interest video. And, you know, like, the, the thing is, is that I'm starting to realize, like, how much I had written like I like I am entirely convinced that my room tour video is going to be like over an hour like it's literally over 30 minutes and I just got through the game setup I still have to do my computer setup and my b-roll table <laughs> it's about one room yeah and you know like one and that's room. like that's a whole thing you know like where I talk about like filming and everything so it's uh like in like you know I guess like the different options that I have in yeah. terms of stuff. Uh, you know, like, I think that people liked uh, 
like the little bit of like extra info of like how we do certain things or achieve certain things or streamline. I mean, it's it's funny because you look back at that 2016 video. It's like, oh, how do how do you know how we streamline things? It seems like the more t we try to streamline things, the uh, longer videos take, which yeah. is entirely 100% a uh, viable like stance to like be annoyed about because it's it's totally true. And like that's like that's like the thing that <laughs> I hate the most about this video, it, like. Is that it's coming out at a time when videos have been like so few and far between. It's like, well, you know, you're doing this stuff, but it doesn't it's seem to be help. like helping. <laughs> well, and it's but, like kind know, of embarrassing, least... I think, uh, because but, of that. But it, at least this this other video is going to come out first, you know? Yeah, okay, well, hope, exactly. Hopefully, the Retro Tink video shouldn't be too far behind it, and the Super Nintendo video not too far behind that, and then. Focus on I'm you'll be doing other things, but I'll be focused on Analog Frontiers, finishing finishing the last episode, uh, you know, from that point on to the end of the year, except for obviously the games we played in 2023. Yeah. Um, it's like I don't, I'm not sure exactly, like after I did the room tour video, and like stuff that we have going on, like I'm not sure like what the rest of the year looks like for me right now. Oh, yo. Maybe, I'll, I mean, I, once I finish what this other thing, then we'll, we'll cross that bridge. We'll figure it out from there. No. Um, I mean, you know, uh, hopefully we'll get review units. I mean, isn't the, um, the analog duo supposed to come out? Yeah, but there hasn't been anything in a while. I mean, I'm not... I'm not sure if it's going to make it this year. I mean, I hopefully we'll get to. I, yeah, I mean, I I, I want to <laughs> review it. I mean, although that I mean that can't that will not be anywhere near as complicated as reviewing the analog pocket. Right. You know, I, I see uh, um, like Joshua Helmick is saying like a log of all your games would be swell, and you know like there's just like too much stuff here to like really go through and do that. But I like in my game collection segment, I kind of go through them like you know I have this stuff. Like here's like some of the things that I like the most in my in my collection, but also you know I I have a big part where I talk about how you know I I feel very fortunate in that I I knew what kind of games I liked early on, uh, or at a time when certain key games such as this came out, and I like I knew that I wanted this like day one, and I still have it. And, like, I, I kind of just talk about how uh, certain things that I have, if I didn't have my specific copy that was, like, mine and I've had, like, my entire history with the game has like been with, like, my copy of the game, then I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't, like, spend, like, the money that it would cost to, like, get a, a copy of the game. I mean, a few years ago, you might have. I might have a few spent, years ago. You spent... You spent... You 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 went pretty far to to get that complete working designs collection. Yes, and you 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 had to correct your one your your yeah. gravest error of having sold um, snatcher. Uh, snatcher. So I feel but I don't like care this, about that snatcher. You like would have treated this game similarly, but I don't I don't see you doing that now. Had that been the case, but um, I I I think you would. But, but who yeah, knows? I'm, well, who I knows? certainly wouldn't go out of my way to get a complete inbox copy. Oh, no, 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 no. But I, I could have seen you pulling the, the trigger. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like on a loose copy. For, for, a, car, for, a, for a car. If you didn't. Right. But, you know, like I'm. I feel very fortunate that I like knew the, that I wanted this game when it came out. And that I still have it. You know, uh, is there is there a better boss dying thing other than outside of Chrono Trigger and Final Fantasy VI? No. You know <laughs> and they like kind of crumble into like pieces. I mean, that's the thing. Like bosses uh, don't have that same feel anymore. Now you're like, especially like in Final Fantasy XVI, you're just like watching that life bar go down. 
but there's nothing like that replicates that same feel of barely hanging on. Mm-hmm. Like nobody, nobody left. You have like one last character, and you like go for that last shot, and it's like you get that first that yeah. flash of flash of white. Yeah, and it's like man. like there nothing, nothing comes close to that now. No, no. Oh, it's so perfect. Oh, so good. <laughs> yes. I mean, you know, I, I I'm I'm honestly kind of torn, like between. Like the more modern RPG way tends to be, uh, tends to be you know life bars, mm-hmm. and <sighs> like I, I'm torn. Like when they have the life bar, I appreciate it. Like I appreciate it. it's like it's nice, but at the same time. Like, I, I do feel like kind of the the tension that's created by the uncertainty of how much health is left. You know, I, I feel like something's missing without that. Yeah. Wait, oh, so you are you experiencing that with Lunar? A little bit? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, well, I mean, the bosses have been... I mean, they're all tough because they, they, they level with you. Oh, do they? The, yeah. Is that all enemies or just bosses? I'm pretty sure it's just bosses. But it, uh, I might be wrong. Like, it, it stays pretty challenging all the way through. Yeah, it, it is. And, you know, I, I actually appreciate uh, an RPG where, like, I I enter a dungeon and there's a good chance I'm going to have to, like, retreat, heal, maybe, you know, upgrade my gear, get, you know, replenish my supplies, and then try it again, you know? Yeah. Like, that... I think a lot of people think like, oh, that's bad because I have to do grinding. But to me, it's not grinding if I'm like trying to get through it, but I have to retreat, you know, and then like try it again. You know, you to me, that's just natural progress. And I I feel like most RPGs, you go into it kind of expecting um, uh you you, uh, you you go into it expecting that uh, you know you're going to get through this dungeon in one try, you know, not a lot of difficulty, but like I, I, I that's why I've always liked stuff like Final Fantasy One, you know, mm-hmm. like sometimes you do have to like go back and try again. Don't you have to go up the other tower to find Morrow? Yeah, there she is. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm I'm uh, I'm liking it so far, but it, it you know it's it's uh, it's it's definitely fairly challenging. It's Luba, <laughs> Chromo. <laughs> Marm, Chromo, and Luba. <laughs> it's like you know, it makes me think of. It makes me <laughs> makes me think of that scene in. Uh, in Spaceballs, when uh, they're chasing after him, and it's like, these aren't them. You oh, captured yeah, their stunt yeah. doubles. <laughs> that's that's who we're playing as. We're playing as the, the real character's <laughs> stunt doubles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, like Kronos like, has a cigar in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you know, he's like unshaven. But from the back, he like cool looks... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, like like his 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 face looks like like <laughs> Lucas' dad. <laughs> yeah, he's like at least twenty years older than the character's supposed to be. Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, that was. <laughs> uh oh, so let me see if I can. Oh, there was a uh, there was a five dollars super chat from uh, from BW. Thank you, B Dubs, saying uh, this game instantly takes me back to Christmas break, nineteen ninety five. Oh. I was fourteen, and it shaped me and my love for RPGs. Who else has fond memories of this time? Oh man, yeah, I can. I I I wish I 
you know, had, had played it even even sooner, uh, like like you did there. But you know, I, I have similar associations of like uh, games from the late '90s uh, and like Thanksgiving Break, you know, because <laughs> I would just like devour them, like like uh, Final Fantasy Nine. Oh man, <laughs> just devoured it over Thanksgiving Break. Oh, great. A good vibe collecting. Says I'm not a fan of the enemies level up with you mechanic in RPGs. Like going back to an early era of the game, dominating enemies that gave you trouble. I mean, I I yeah. 100% agree. I, I agree. and and is it Final Fantasy VIII is like that too, isn't it? But you can oh, break yeah, it. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's probably the most infamous example. Like that, and also like, um, I want to say it's, is it Fallout Three? I think that this is also a pretty infamous example. Um, I, 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 I agree because it's like, what's the point? What, what do you get out of leveling up? <laughs> I mean, yes, especially in more like Western RPGs, you do get like skill points and stuff that expand mm -hmm. your skills, but I don't, I just, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. <laughs> like, it just seems... But that said, like, I, I love a lot of games that do that, but I just, like, always wish that they didn't. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I, I'm thinking about putting Final Fantasy VIII in my, like, the like games to play next year. Even though you've beaten it before? Yeah, I was thinking about just doing it. Um, I mean, I was, I was thinking, actually, about, like, after I did Final Fantasy XIII last year and had such a good time replaying it, I was, like, kind of thinking about, like, picking an RPG to replay every year, like, outside of, like, my pick 10. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about it. But, like, I thought, like, eh, I'll just, I'll just pick that game when it strikes me. But, obviously, that hasn't happened this year, and... I don't think it's going to happen given, you know, I'm trying to do, still do, well, I guess, you know what, Mario RPG, it'll be yeah. the remake, but that kind of counts. I'll say that counts for this year. Um, But maybe I'll, maybe I'll go into next year. Like, maybe we should do that. Like, we'll both pick one RPG to replay. Yeah. I think that'd be really fun. Um. You know, I, I finished uh, uh, Police Knots. The uh, oh yeah, the uh, the other night, and uh, I mean, I don't think I'm like spoiling anything, but I am like amazed at how I, I know almost nothing about it. By the way, okay, well, you know, I was ex expecting like some Kojima like craziness, because even Snatcher kind of has that Kojima craziness like at the end. Mm -hmm. But it was, like, super restrained. And I was hmm. like, that's it? <laughs> I was kind well, of amazed you know, that it you, was just... When you, go, when you go back to Metal Gear Solid 1, it, it, like, the way it ends is, like, super tame compared to the later Metal Gear. Oh, I know. Like, but, you know, I... I but Snatcher kind of goes, like, pretty crazy. And he, like, has some, like, major twists at the very end. Yeah. But this, I mean, Police Knots is just really straightforward. Like, I was expecting there to be some craziness. And I'm like, oh, that's, like, the bad guy's plan. Like, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> so, very good game, by the way. But uh, I don't think it even comes close to Snatcher. I think Snatcher is much, much better. Just as a good the setting, the storyline, characters. You know, it's just... It just is definitely better. Um, there was uh, oh a notification that John H has been a member for fifteen months in a row. Whoa! 15. Thank you. Saying that uh, Lunar was my first JRPG on the Sega CD. Which version are you playing? Are you playing the unworked designs version? Fantastic game. Uh, no, I was, I was talking about earlier. I'm not playing the Unworked Designs version. I'm playing the PS1 version. Um, 
I, I I could see myself potentially. I mean, I don't know that much about the Sega CD versions outside of like, I've like loaded them up on Mister, um, briefly, and you know, I, I know some stuff from you know Corey talking about it, but um, uh, I I could see myself like liking some aspects potentially better because, um, like one thing that I think is kind of silly is like. You know, most so far anyway. I mean, there's like there's like a big musical number, uh, it, that's you know an, anime FMV, um, but like most of the other cutscenes are like just like a character introduction and like they like come up into the frame and then they're just like bot 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 doing you know this totally still face and anime mouth moving and it just goes on for like. 10, 15 seconds of like no significant animation. Mm -hmm. And they're like wasting all of this FMV time on like nothing. <laughs> and I, I feel like the, uh, like the, the Sega CD PC engine style of cutscene would like both look better without like all that FMV compression. And, yeah, but... uh, and and just be more efficient and and look cleaner and better. Yeah, I, I I get that, and you're you are absolutely right. But you have to understand like why they did it, because they oh, could, oh. and you know like they're not thinking about like oh it looks. It's gonna look worse. It's gonna it's gonna it's gonna, it's gonna, gonna look worse. worse in thirty years when people are playing it on on HD TVs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you know like at the time it's like oh you know like those are the reward. Like we've talked about that. Like, you know it's like the oh yeah. You know, it's funny. They're talking about the uh, we got we have to create a criminal justice system so this never happens again. And he's like, now he is the uh, the um, victim of what he did. Uh, you know, I never thought of that. Did they say that? Yeah, the one like... the one chancellor character said, "Oh, we need to we have to create a criminal justice system so this never happens again." I I wonder if in the rules of Chrono Trigger, then the the that there was no criminal justice system when they leave 1000 AD initially. I don't know. I, I love this music, by the way. This is one of the best tracks in the game. I mean, would you say that this is this game's equivalent of the, uh, um, like the opera scene? Even though it's still pretty early in the game when it happens, but I feel yeah, like it's, it's a big set piece. It's definitely a set piece. Yeah. Like it, it obviously it has it has different different goals and and different presentation. But yes, it's like it's like a set piece with like a, a unique uniquely designed background. Um, yeah, I would I would say that. Marmaid. Like, <laughs> Marm did. Mar Marm did it. <laughs> oh, you're you're going you're going to get nailed for for picking up that pendant first. I well, I I asked her I mean, when I replayed it. I checked on her first. Oh, okay. I should have done it the same way, but it doesn't matter. You should have done it the same way. I, I didn't mean to. I I forget what I mean because you still end up. I think you, you still like no matter what. I think you end up in jail. Yeah. Uh, and have to escape in the same way. So I, I honestly, I for, like I think you maybe get some nicer rewards, but I, I, I don't think there is a major. Is it possible to win? Well, oh. I, I, I mean, I, I think, I mean, I, you you can do as good as you can, but you still end up in jail. I think. Okay. <laughs> I, I I I love the part where 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 the 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 lawyer is like is like it's like he had no oh. motive, and then the chancellor is just like ransom, perhaps. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's I just spitballing here, like I don't know. He brought one money. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. I thought Perhaps. I checked on her, but maybe I. That person said that I went for went straight for it. 
Um, but anyway, to, to, to finish up what I was saying to John H. about Lunar, uh, I mean, you know, I, I, I have the PS1 version. And even though I'm, I'm playing it on my PS1 digital with X Station, like, I still feel... You know, I, I like to play the exact version that I own. I like to play by the rules of that version that I own. I like to play with the content of that version that I own. Mm -hmm. I don't tend to like playing modified versions as my, you know, especially as my first experience. Uh, right. Uh, so I, I, I want to play well, I mean, just, yeah, it's just to judge as it, like, it is nice. in the version that I own a disc of, even though I'm technically not playing the disc. Right. And, you know, like, without, like, the, the cartridge itself saving, I feel like the disc, like, having the disc is less important. Because mm. your safe files not getting stored. I, I, I still, like, having the disc is an important thing for me for, like, considering it, like, part of my back. You know? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, like, I, I wouldn't be making a great effort to play it right now if I didn't own it. Well, yeah, I mean, that's exactly what I mean. But... You're okay, you like, playing the, the digital, like, a X Station version. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you what, though. Um, <laughs> I mean, this just goes to show, like, how my mindset is. And I've, I've never, like, you know, like, to be honest, like, the past couple of years, like, I haven't played through, like, that many, like, PS1 games. So, like, I haven't there haven't been that many games where I've like really like played through it and put like both the X station and the PS one digital to like a real stress test. Like, yeah, I've like, I've tested a lot of games and streamed a game here and there, mm -hmm. but like actually like playing all the way through a game through an RPG, like that. something I haven't, especially an RPG, something I haven't done yeah. on PS one in a few years. So, uh, like, I feel like I, like, this is, this is one of, like I did that, I did. I played through Spyro Two on X Station and PS One Digital. Mm -hmm. But like, yeah, this is like the first time I played through like an RPG, right? You know, like something really extensive using both X Station and PS One. And like, <laughs> I immediately noticed, like on the second screen, like, or no, I even noticed on the first screen. I think um, there's like. Sometimes, like, the top of the screen, like, gets a little janky. Like, when the screen is scrolling about, like, it kind of looks like a screen tear or just, like, it's just, like, not displaying the right tiles sometimes when you're when you're walking about. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, is this just how the game is? Is it because of the X station or is it because of the PS1 digital? Don't know. Right. So... The first thing I did was I, I already had, because I've been testing it, uh, I already had the S, uh, some S video cables out. So I connected those to the PS1, you know, without turning off the game or anything, ran those into the, um, the RetroTink 4K and immediately saw, okay, same thing happens over S video. But like, what, you know, what if, you know, that, that still, like, makes it think, like, what if there's, like, some sort of timing weirdness going on because of either X Station or PS1 Digital? Mm -hmm. I thought it was, I thought it was relatively unlikely, but I had to know, right? Like, yeah. I had to be sure that not, nothing to do with the way I was playing this game was the reason for it, right? So I was like, all right. I'll, I'll, you know, put my real disc and my unmodified PS1 on RGB on my PVM and see if I see it. And I did. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, okay. <laughs> and later, like, I, I noticed, uh, I noticed that there was a lot of, like, sort of harsh, like, sort of just sounds and battle just because of like sa the way sound effects would play they would like he like kills like, Conan kills, kills the guards and he's like pumping his fist yeah <laughs> uh, <laughs> um but anyway 
So I noticed there was like a lot of harsh sounds. I'm like, oh, is this like, could this be like a sample rate issue on the PS1 digital? And so, you know, again, like I had to listen to the analog audio. And yeah, it happens in, in, that, in that too. Just how the game is. The, ga yeah. the game does have a little bit of jank, even though it is, you know, a remake. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a little, just a little jank in it. Yeah. But so it's overall, it's overall pretty solid and well made, but you know, there's, there's a few janky things that made me like, just be like, okay, I have to make sure, I have to make sure that, and, but you know what? It's, it's good that I had those experiences because going back and checking and, and verifying like, oh, this was, you know, was this an issue with the PS1 digital or the X station? And the answer was no each time it does like instill further confidence in those mods for me. So I will, I'm more, I'm more likely to, to not be so skeptical of them. But like those, these are the things that go through my mind when I'm, when I'm, you know, when I'm checking stuff, like, I'm like, oh no, it's something, something not right. <laughs> well, now you know. Uh, no. There was, um, there was a $5 super chat from, from EB Chill 2 saying, uh, anybody dabbling in Starfield this week? Uh, I, I, I actually play, I, I like, I'm not like going to like continue it or anything right now. Like I definitely want to play through it someday. Uh, but like, I, I, you know, I dabbled in it for like an hour yesterday. Hmm. Uh, on, you know, via Game Pass. I actually thought I didn't have access to Game Pass anymore. Um, did you? I thought... Like, but I guess I do. Did you, like... I know you're going to, like, change some stuff around. Did so, you... yeah, so I was... I was... go Like, <laughs> when when retail mode emulate... When, when Microsoft started cracking down on retail mode emulators, because, you know, I got, like, an Xbox Series S for really cheap. I was like, you know, okay, I'll use this with like an alt account and like use it for the emulation stuff because using emulators on like a console like that is like much more appealing to me than using emulators on a computer. You know, my main thinking is like when, um, man, I'm looking at like the lighting in this background. Like you've got like the cool light on the tiles in the, I mean, you're already past me. Like, oh cool yeah, I mean, like, yeah. I mean, I mean, in the background, the warm light, like at the door, like, like the, like the sense of, Oh, not like outside. I was talking about like inside. Oh, okay. Actually, like, I always just, love the just like outside the way the light shines on the bricks. Like, there's just so much dimension to the lighting in this background. It's fantastic. Um. Uh, but anyway, um. Uh. Yeah, yeah. So, so I, I, I was going. I was like contemplating, like, like maybe I'll just like use the Series S. Like just to like, just as my like system for like just checking games out, and like any digital like any digital Xbox games I own like those would for the most part just be be just as good on Series S as Series X. Like I'll, I'll use it as like my digital system and use it for like checking out games on Game Pass. And stuff. I thought about like getting a subscription to Game Pass just for checking stuff out, and I may do it sometime eventually, especially like when your subscription runs out. And so, like, I, pre I like, preemptively deleted your account off my Series X because I thought I was going to do it, and then I got sidetracked and got lazy and um, didn't. So I actually thought I didn't have access to it anymore, but, like, I, I checked it out, and I, I do. So I was able to check out Starfield. Um, huh. Honestly, like, I'm, I'm, I, I was pretty impressed. Uh, like, you know, I've been watching, like, all the Digital Foundry coverage of it and stuff, and... Like the the compressed video does like not do it justice. Like I, I think it it looks a lot nicer than I expected. Like there's just a lot more texture and detail to the world than is conveyed through web video. Um, uh, I thought it looked pretty nice. Even the even the you know very Bethesda NPC conversations. It's it's. I mean yeah, they're they're Bethesda NPCs all right, but. I still think they are, uh, they're a more significant jump than I realized. Like, I, I think it, I think it, it's a significant improvement aesthetically, uh, in most ways, uh, over, over some of the, 
the previous uh, <laughs> Bethesda games. I, I, I was I was pretty pretty. The one thing that I wasn't so sure about was like I, I didn't love the <laughs> Luma space. And Robo, I've come to save you. <laughs> um uh i didn't love the space combat but like i'm sh i could probably i'd probably get more used to it like is i didn't understand like how to loot exploded ships like i said like get close to them and press x and it didn't it didn't seem to work um yeah i mean you know if you i just like, i have zero interest i like i just weirdly like, like i don't like it and to be fair, like, like I haven't played games, through any of Bethesda's games. If you like Bethesda games, it sure is a Bethesda game. You yeah, know, I mean, like, like I don't played don't anything. don't I go into it expecting I've never played them. Anything? I would say don't go into it expecting anything more or less. If you like Bethesda games, I think you'll like it. If you don't like Bethesda games, you probably won't like it. It seems yeah. pretty cool. Though. It's just it's just like I just I just don't care. It's, it seems pretty cool. I look forward to playing through it. Somewhere. Does anyone know if like the physical copy is like useful? <laughs> Out of no, I heard something that, like it has like a fifty gig patch needs to download. Like needs it, to download. Yeah, it's, like, it's, you it's not possible. Play the so game it, without it, it. You cannot play the game without it. Right, that's so. Like, yeah, it's, it definitely seems worth waiting. Like, I, I'd be curious if a uh, if a uh, if a useful physical comes out someday. I got a game of the year edition. I love that, that he jumps on it and then kills it. Like, that's that final blow. No, oh, yeah. I mean, that's, like, I mean, that's, that's like that's one in, of the most the iconic opening. scenes in the entire game. See? That yeah, fight. well, I mean, it's in the opening scene. Yeah. You know, the, the pre-title scene. Uh, there was uh, 20 reals from A14. Thank you. Thank you. Saying, did you like DKC? I assume Donkey Kong Country. If so, what uh, what do you most expect from the new entry? Also, do you believe a new Zelda can be the launch game for Switch Two? The new entry? Are we? Are, is is DKC referring to Donkey Kong Country? I there's no announced new Donkey Kong Country. I mean, there's rumors going around there's going to be a Nintendo Direct really soon, and like apparently some. Uh, leaker has said that one of the games is going to be a remaster of F-Zero. Oh. But I, didn't, I don't know if there was anything one? Donkey Kong Country uh, related. Yeah, I mean, first of all, I mean, assuming we're talking about assuming DKC means Donkey Kong Country. I love Donkey Kong Country. Freaking love the Super Nintendo trilogy. Some of my favorite platform games of all time. I think the, some of the best level design in, a, in platformers ever. Um, I hate Donkey Kong Country Returns. Uh, and I don't love Tropical Freeze. Tropical Freeze, I consider to be like perfect aesthetically. I love how it looks. I love how it sounds. Uh, <laughs> I love the, 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 like, the, the winter... Uh, bad guy theme of the game, like it just it, the, the 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 enemies are really fun looking. Uh, the you know the 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 wintry levels in the end are uh, are really fun. Uh, you know, fun theme. Uh, but like it just those games infuriate me because the mechanics don't feel like what Donkey Kong Country is to me. And I, I can't adapt to, like, the different, like, trajectory that, like, your roll jumps have. Like, I just, I never, I feel like I'm shot out of a cannon every time I roll jump. Like, it doesn't <laughs> feel like I expect. Uh, I, I, like, I was thinking a while back, like, you know what it feels like? It feels like when they were developing the mechanics for the game, they were playing, uh, Donkey Kong Country uh, stretched on an HD TV, and they like copied the mechanics based on the stretch, the, the stretch factor. <laughs> and they translated that to the new game. 
<laughs> That's what it feels like to me. It feels so wrong. Um, I want to love those games because, I mean, they, they have a great aesthetic, especially Tropical Freeze. Uh, lots of people say, like, oh, Tropical Freeze is a perfect platformer. I wish I wish I agreed, but I, I can't. Like, I, I tend to be very open to games having, like, different mechanics from, or, or, or even, like, being just really different in concept in general, uh, you know, to some of their predecessors. I'm, I'm usually really open to that kind of stuff. Um, but, boy, uh, I, I just, I cannot, I cannot adapt to those newer Donkey Kong Country games. So, uh, you know, if there is going to be a new Donkey Kong Country, um, I mean, I would assume that it would not be Retro Studios, which would be good from my point of view, because I love what they do on Metroid. I don't love what they do on Donkey Kong. Because uh, if Retro is working on Metroid Prime 4, I don't see how they could be doing Donkey Kong. So I, I would... I would love for... Um, Platonic. If they got Platonic to make a Donkey Kong Country game, mm -hmm. it would, I mean, it would possibly be game of the year. <laughs> uh, because they proved, they proved they know what to, they're doing with, um, with uh, Ukulele and the Impossible yeah. Layer. That game is amazing. I love that game so much more than either of Retro Studios' Donkey Kong. But you never ended up finishing Impossible Layer, did you? <laughs> no, I didn't, which is really funny considering how much I loved that game. But, you know, like, I'm actually kind of excited about that, like, getting back to it. Maybe I should put that on my uh, my my um, my 10 games for next year list. Um, yeah. Because, you know, I've, I've also got the Xbox version because I just I just wanted to have, like, a 4K version of it, too. Mm. Um, and so I, I would probably, like, replay it on that. But, yeah, I... I, I got pretty close, but I never quite beat the impossible layer. But I did like I did most of the content in the game and got like a lot. Like I wasn't missing that many bees overall. Um, so uh, uh, so yeah, um, I, I I thought it was great. I thought the mechanics in that game were and level design was fantastic yeah uh, and i I'm, I'm honestly excited about the fact that i still need to beat that game because because obviously it's been so long i'm not going to be taking on the impossible layer like going into a cold run like that right yeah so uh so i'll i'll definitely start over again possibly the xbox version just because hey it's 4k why not um I, i'm i'm excited i'm excited to get around to that eventually you know i started uh since i, since I finished police knots i started uh, shenmue over the weekend, which was like appropriate because yesterday was nine nine. Oh yeah, yeah and it yeah, was yeah, like yeah. it was kind of unintentional, and, and I was like, oh, I guess that makes sense. Um, yeah. And uh, it's uh, I it's I'm I'm amazed at how much more I'm enjoying it than I've enjoyed like it previously. I'm, oh, on previous great. attempts, I guess. That's great. Are, are you playing the HD version? I'm playing the HD version just because of load time and just, you know, overall streamlinedness, I guess. Which system do you have it for? Uh, I'm playing on the uh, on PS4. But I do have, I have the Xbox version also. But, you know, there's only so much, it's, it's you know, it's, it's kind of janky in general. Yeah. Uh, but I'm specifically on the part where I'm, like, looking for the sailors. And... You know, I'm I'm just enjoying it a lot more than uh, before because I didn't really care for it. Like it would put me to sleep before, uh, and now I guess just like with my adult brain, I'm understanding like, oh, you, you know, you can just like look in the notebook and just like figure out exactly what you need to do next all the time. Mm. And there's other stuff going on, and it happens in real time, but it seems like things only change. Uh, there's like from the morning until like five o'clock is all one thing. And then once it like gets dark out, then things change. But that's all there really is. Mm. At least. So it's not, as, it's not as overwhelming as you thought. No, no. It's like I'm finding it just the, the thing I'm struggling with the most is the controls. 
Like they're just kind of weird. It feels it feels wrong sometimes. Yeah, I mean that that's kind of been my experience with just testing it out a bit. Before before we move on from A14s, uh, uh, too too far off of, of what A14 was talking about though, he, he also asked. Uh, uh, also, do you believe a new Zelda can be the launch game for Switch 2? I I wouldn't think so. I mean, especially considering. Um, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they like release like patches for Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom to like run it. 60 frames per second or 4k or something um, mm -hmm. I, I i wouldn't be surprised if they do that but like i don't think a new a new zelda game i mean if if it comes if the game is set to come out or the system is set to come out in the second half of 2024 like uh, the rumors are suggesting uh, i just think that's too soon um you know i i i was kind of talking about this in the in like discord the other day I think, um, I mean, I, I I would I would bet money on the next 3D Mario being like mostly done by now. Yeah. Like, because Nintendo, I mean, for one, it's been a long time. It's even started to be a long time since Bowser's Fury. Um, mm -hmm. And Nintendo doesn't announce stuff until like they're basically done at this point, right? So I, I would, I suspect one of two things are going to happen or maybe both, but probably not if it launched necessarily, but like, it's either going to be, it's either going to launch with Metroid Prime 4 or the next 3D Mario. Yeah. I'm, or I'm potentially sure both, will, both. Although potentially I mean, I, I, both, but I, I, I kind of doubt that. Like I, I would expect they would, do one and then the other one or two months later, I would say is more likely. Yeah. Now I do think Metroid prime four at the very least will be a cross gen game. And I would be surprised, honestly, if Mario wasn't cross gen as well. Mm -hmm. Wow. I don't rem this like Ryan above the, yeah, I don't remember this either. I don't remember this part at all. I don't remember this part at all. <laughs> it's been a while, I guess. Chromo, what's going on? Has he Falks say, and you say Donkey Kong Country One is awful. Its level structure is insultingly simple and dull. Uh, I mean, I can understand thinking it's simple, but I don't think it's dull at all. Like that—that's kind of what I like about it. Is I feel like it is—it is like platforming, like distilled to its like most pure form and I think the level design is actually like the 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 second and third games I think do this even better um but like most levels in the series like kind of the levels they have gimmicks you know I don't think gimmick is a dirty word uh they have an idea for each level that is kind of like you're introduced to it at the beginning mm -hmm. and then they sort of iterate upon that idea. One enemy becomes two enemies, becomes three enemies and these patterns that will replicate over the, the level. And they sort of fully, especially the second and third game, they'll, they'll sort of fully explore the gimmick for that level within the level. Like, yeah. you know, so you kind of have this idea that is like fully explored. Um, uh, you know, in, in each level. And then the next level is like something, something different, but it all works within the game's very simple, pure platforming mechanics. And that's what I love about them so much is like, you know, it, it, I, I, I think the way I love Donkey Kong Country is similar to the way that a lot of people love Sonic because Sonic is very simple and straightforward as well. Um, uh, you know, it's, you know, it's a, there, it's a one button game. Right. Uh, and the level design, the flow doesn't, the flow of those levels doesn't really jive with me as much as the flow in the Donkey Kong country, uh, uh, games. Uh, but I, I, I see that the appeal, I think it's similar, like just that pure, simple plat, that pure, 
simple platforming mechanics uh, combined with just like level design that just flows really, really well. Um, but anyway, anyway, the there was while you were. While you were first saying that you were uh, getting more into to Shinmu than you expected, uh, Mega X Six dropped a, a five dollars super chat saying, "I'm playing Shinmu too, <laughs> like two T O O also, uh, not Shinmu too." Yeah. Uh, first time through, and I am absolutely loving it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know what I think helps a lot is like having played uh, some uh, Yakuza games, mm -hmm. and. You know, like, this is kind of a direct predecessor to it, right? I mean, I think a lot of, like, hardcore Shinmu fans or hardcore Yakuza fans, either or, yeah. like, sometimes get a little annoyed at that comparison because it's like, well, it's not exactly the same thing. But I, I could see how those games could get you, help get you in the mindset yes. of appreciating one or the other, um, even though they are different. And, like, I, I enjoy that, you know, both series are kind of these celebration of all things Sega. Like, at the mm -hmm. time of their release, I guess. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate that. Uh, and I, I'm actually playing it in Japanese, the Japanese VO. Oh, okay. I mean... Because well, I, I know, like, the, you know, the English VO is, like, there's, like, something kitschy about it. Yeah. But... You know, I just kind of wanted to enjoy it and not be like, oh, the the voiceover is like is is goofy and like, I just kind of wanted to experience it as this, uh, as like, a as, as seriously experience. as possible, I guess. Like, just kind of right. get like for it to, um, and I mean, this is what I like in in Yakuza also is just to kind of immerse yourself in this Japanese culture, this right. within the game. But doesn't um. If I'm not mistaken, like the series eventually goes to China. Like, is the second game in China? I think so. Portions of it, at least. That, that's my impression. Like, I wonder if characters would speak Japanese and the Japanese VO for that, or if there's like an option for those char characters to speak Chinese or something. Right. Because like that, that would be a little weird. I would think like if you were playing the Japanese version for immersion, but then mm. like. They don't speak Chinese in China. Yeah. You know, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Bianc says, uh, who's also done a oh, ton yes. of work for uh, on those old live streams. So thank you. Yes, yes. The saying Shenmue walked so Yakuza could run. And that's absolutely true. Yeah. One, one Yakuza, I don't think would exist without, to, to an extent, at least. I do think, though, when I get around to playing Shenmue, I do think I'll play the like mm -hmm. I, I mean so i've i, want, I, I, mean, I want tried multiple times uh with you know with the english dub and it's the 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 sound quality on the voices in general in the game is so compressed and like i don't know just there it's just it just sounds really bad like it's i don't know if it's just compression or if it's just the conditions well, the in which English they recorded version it. The English version sounds more compressed than the Japanese version? No, they it, they both sound bad. Just like the quality of it is just not very good. Well, I mean, I, I, I guess, I, you know, I can see that in a similar way to like when I played through Eternal Sonata, I played with the Japanese dub, which was the first time I'd ever done that. Like where I had the option to play English or Japanese uh, audio. Mm -hmm. And I... I chose the Japanese one uh, and the, the reason was um, like I just I thought the English dub was so bad and I, I the story was kind of you know not amazing or anything but I felt like I could take it more seriously like reading it than listening to it if that made sense makes sense like you know I couldn't understand the language, the spoken language, and somehow right. the the whole scenario just it seemed less silly, um, like absorbing it through reading rather than listening to it in addition to. Reading. Um, mm -hmm. 
So I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. So like, I, I could see it being the same situation where like, like listening to it in Japanese somehow makes the audio compression feel less bad. <laughs> I don't know about really you, but, but what I don't know about you, but Chromo mm. is still funny to me. <laughs> it's, I still well, I, laugh every time I, I see I'm, it. I'm thinking ahead to Robo. I mean, you're not going to have a lot of. Uh, you're not going to have that many options. It's going to be. What's it going to be? It's going to be. Uh, it's going to be. It's going to be Roco. Like Loco Roco. Oh, yeah. Roco. But I mean, I feel well, like I kind of just want to name him Jimbo. <laughs> or like if you go the, the R, let's see, uh, Q R, it'd be it'd be it'd be Kobo or Sobo. No, Sobo might be would be fun. <laughs> I'm sure he doesn't watch these streams, but he'd probably get a kick out of it. Madashi, he thinks Jimbo is the only option. I, I kind of I, in a way, I kind of feel the same way. <laughs> well, yeah. where it's okay if it's just. Uh, you know, it's it's okay if it's the one off, because <laughs> the other ones make sense, and it's it's almost funnier to have this one that doesn't make any sense. Mm, okay, okay. I mean, you know, you you'd be going with my my original. Yeah. Old Jimbo. Old. 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 Jim, Jim Beam, <laughs> Jim. Uh, uh, I, I see that there was a uh, a four nine nine with no no comment uh, from uh, uh, Kohab Co 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 <laughs> Co Kohabadad. Thank you. Thank you. So I w you know I how I call Nelly. I call her Nelly Bean a lot. Mm. Well, now I start tell, saying that, like, oh, like, like, this is going to shoot me with the, with the Nelly beam. <laughs> do, you, do you say... Not the Nelly beam. beam. with an N or beam with an M? Be, beam with an M. Like the, like okay. the, like so, the... So now you, you have also, I mean, that's, you have, you have shifted Nell, Nelly's name by, by one letter <laughs> to, to the right or left. Nelly B. How do I get out of here? Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, it's right here. You, you could start calling her. Oh, she's going to hit her. Gonna sh Melly. Gonna sh shoot or, me with the Nelly beam. Or, or Nemi. <laughs> yeah. Who cares? Where's the food? Sounds like, sounds like me. <laughs> but 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 you hate food. I you know. <laughs> I'm I'm never gonna not be able to live it down. You're, you're never gonna like, live I, that like, down. What? You're never gonna be able to live that down. I know. I know. Like I I say it every time. I, every time it comes up, it's like you know, it's like never gonna. <laughs> every time you bring it up on the podcast, he's just like, "Well, oh, that's so weird." You were thinking about food because you you hate food. <laughs> yep. Because because I'm like not picky, I think. It's like I don't like I don't think about it as much. I'm just not. I'm just Master not picky. Safer says says yo Jimbo. I, I I I can't I can't I, I I'm not sure if he is re referencing to referencing yo Jimbo or like what, what what what's his name like Wade from uh from uh, Golden Eye. I, I, th I don't think he says yo Jimbo. I, th I think he says hey. I think he says hey, hey Jimbo. <laughs> oh. And, and Golden Eye. This, is, this isn't the proto down. I haven't watched Golden Eye in forever, so I'm a bad person then. But Go Golden Eye was was the first time I ever heard the name Jimbo. Oh, there's the sewer access. You know, you were like oh. Yeah, so I, I was, you know, when I got to the sewer level in um, in uh, Lunar, I was telling Corey, like, 
like only half jokingly to be honest like i i, I honestly think like someday this could be a fun thing to do like we should we should do a video that's the top 10 jrpgs without sewer lines. and like i don't even think there's 10. <laughs> there's gotta be i mean the, 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 that, that i've played i can't think of <laughs> 10 that i've played that do, do not have sewers at least in some form the, like does, waterways like i think the waterways count like like what about like final fantasy 4 like you've got like the like there's like a waterfall cave oh yeah final fantasy 8 big time has a sewer level it's um when uh zell and quistus and selfie go into the sewers um uh during the uh the assassin assassination attempt that's a whole thing. Like that, that, that. Honestly, Final Fantasy VIII is one of the first games I think of when I think of sewer levels. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, uh, uh, Foxy says Fancy Star one through four no sewers. I mean, you know, I feel like most levels in fancy star one could be interpreted as potentially being a sewer yeah no you i mean you go into the manhole in the the spaceport and uh, in uh, the like the kamenite spaceport and you can get to gothic and you're in a sewer you take the manhole in the sewers and you go out of the city it's not a whole level i mean maybe that would be the best one because it's so quick um well, but like Final Fantasy IV, does it? I mean, like the waterfall cave, like th that doesn't count as a sewer. No. Well, hold on a second though. Don't you go under Baron Castle, like before you fight, um, um, what's his face? The fiend the entire of, underworld uh, could be can can be considered a, a sewer. No. <laughs> Come on. I know. I, I of course not. National Color says Final Fantasy 16. Yeah, you know, I think you're right. I don't think it had a sewer. But I also wouldn't call that an RPG. It, I mean, it wouldn't be what I would, you know, what I would term a jail. Yes. <laughs> um, I mean, I like it. I, mean, you know, I don't mean to insult the game. I like it. But, you know, it's, it's definitely different. Um, I feel like the best thing to come out of Final Fantasy 16 is the guy who plays Clive, like his uh, auditioning for other roles on Twitter. Oh, voice acting roles. I, I saw, I saw, I saw, I saw him. I, I didn't know that, that is, was like a thing. Uh, other than I saw, I saw him do one for, for, for Mario. Yeah, where he's just he's just doing Clive's voice and he's like, "Hey, it's me. I'm Mario." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's. I feel as though the more time passes, the less I like Final Fantasy 16. I I, I feel so uh, like as though I might not like it enough that I'm also I'm like almost tempted to revisit 15 to see if I would like if it you more like now. It more. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. I, I mean, I, I think, I think it's no contest. I, think I mean, it, it. I. Sixteen is way better than fifteen. I just, I feel as though, I mean, it probably is no contest, but it, it like sixteen is just like the more time passes, I'm kind of like, oh. Like I just have no interest in. I'm glad that I captured all the footage that I, I will need for our end of the year video because I have just like zero interest in. Uh, <laughs> Reboot, like booting it back up. Because I mean, I think that there is a point Af after the the Titan fight. I feel like the game totally like jettisons like all of the uh, the world intrigue and stuff, like the political stuff that's happening between like the warring countries, which just kind of goes out the window and is basically forgotten. I mean, once it starts focusing on the the main big bad more, I. I, I feel like he was ill-defined, and so kind of some of the, the driving force was maybe a little weak there. Mm-hmm. 
and also that you know once the world like has clouds all the time it, it's it's kind of not that interesting visually it's all, like pink all the time <laughs> yeah but overall i think it's good Um, either way, like, uh, so someone was, someone was, was pondering if Final Fantasy VI has sewers. Is there anything under Vector? I don't know. It's been, I haven't played through it all the way in a long time. Um, I'm sure that there is sewers. Like, you sneak into some place. Uh, yeah, it, it would make sense for there to be sewers. Six. Final Fantasy 16 has no snow level, and I did think about that, actually. I was surprised. Hmm. Oh, that was that was the boss. The crawly was was a boss. Was it? I don't I, remember I, that. I, I, it's hard to tell it was a boss when I kill everything I mean, in like at least like two hits. I mean, it. it to be fair, I I suppose it. You know. It makes sense that the boss of the sewer level would be forgettable. Yeah. I was watching an archive of one of Game Dave's live streams, and he was uh, going through and doing a tier level for all of the mainline Final Fantasy games. Of course, there's a lot, like, after 10 that he has to play. I know. I'm actually surprised that you know, like 10, 10 2 is like the last one he played. Yeah. Oh yeah. He he didn't play any between ten two and fifteen. Did he play fifteen? Yeah. Oh, he like he like went pretty hardcore completion on I think. On ten two or fifteen? Really? Yeah. And same with seven remake. Yeah. Oh, it's the, it's the new. Oh, yeah. Wow, Mega X6 enjoyed 15 more than 7 Remake. Hmm. I, I I thought the gameplay in Seven Remake was significantly more compelling. Um, I mean, I I have issues with it, but like, you know, Final Fantasy Seven Remake. I think both of us have the same um, have the same reaction to where like we like it. The as time passed after finishing it, we like liked it more. Yes. You remember Xenogear sewer level? I can't say. I, I, I remember Xenogear sewer level like being really annoying. Really, really I long. Don't... I mean, there's so much in that game that's just like really long, anyways. Oh but yeah, I've, oh, I've only played time... through it once. Have you played through that game more than one time? No, no. Like it, at the time I beat it, it was by far the longest game I'd ever. Finished. Yeah. Like I like probably put like between 70 and 80 hours into it. Mm -hmm. Like I had never, you know, like, like my final fantasy uh, times never like got over, you know, out sixties. I don't think. Yeah. Um, I, th there's a lot. I don't remember about Xeno gears. Yeah, uh, same same here. Uh, I just have the uh, the music from inside of the airship, the the Yggdrasil. Is that what it was? The, the Yggdrasil. Yggdrasil. Was that the name of the airship? Yeah. Always being that same music. I I, I, I never knew how to say y Yggdrasil. Is it Yggdrasil? Uh, I I always until I, uh, um, uh, Tales of Symphonia. Hmm. Although I've heard it said maybe a couple of different ways, but I was the one sort of like 
Is that how I say it? Uh, there was a 199 from Dingus Glurt. Oh. Asking, try, what is your least favorite fall fancy? <laughs> <laughs> what is... <laughs> What is, what is a my fall least favorite fancy? Fall, fa fall fancy. Fall fancy. Oh. Fall fancy. <laughs> oh. Uh, generally, I consider 15 to be my least favorite, but before 15 came out, I considered 2 to be my least favorite. Not 4. Not not that 2. But like 2-2. Two, two. The only version of 2 I've ever played through is the PS1 version. Um, And I feel like I've heard that some of the leveling quirks were like fixed and rebalanced in the PSP version. Um, and so uh, I, I've always kind of wanted to replay it like on PSP or some other version. Um, I, 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 I've, I, I've, felt an urge to give Final Fantasy 2 another shot. I mean, I did finish it on PS1, but um, I just, I didn't, I didn't love it that much. Um, I wouldn't say I actively disliked it, though. Mm -hmm. um, I never played through um, 2. I played through par portions of it, but that's the only one, like, mainline one that's not online that I haven't finished. Mm -hmm. Hmm. And before I played 15, 8 was my least favorite. But I'm I'm curious if I would like 8 more now. Especially, like, if I knew how to break it, like, early on. And just... Right, like, like, I don't know, like, the tutorial, it, it's very tutorialized, but obviously, like, it, it didn't convey a lot of that information super well for a lot mm. of people, I would say. Because a lot of people... Um, A lot of people didn't really know how to use junctioning properly. Right. Know? Because it's confusing, really. It's, it's, I mean, well, it's presented kind of poorly because it's like in the junction menu, like junctioning magic is this like secondary tab that kind of looks like it's like not even a, it's like presented in a way where it like doesn't look like an important function. Right. It's really not confusing, but once you understand, it, it's like, oh, this makes total sense. It's super easy to but it the presentation is not necessarily ideal. Um, in that regard. Yeah, I see. Uh, Samurai uh, Samurai JD says I got to Alsamicia's castle and without understanding functioning fun or you know junctioning, I'm assuming. And I, I'm the same way. Like I just like I got to the point where I you know made it to the end of the game without really understanding it. And uh, then I couldn't beat the last boss. And then yeah, well, I, I mean, the, the other story I commonly hear is they couldn't beat uh, Adele, which is like right at the beginning of Disc Four, mm. like second to last dungeon. Well, here comes Jimbo. Yep. Like that's one of my favorite things in this, is when you put him in the in the the wheat fields and he does it yes. for like you know just for hundreds of years, right? And then he's like he's like broken down. Yeah. And like for you, it was like just a few minutes. Just, yeah. But you, for you him, go, it was yeah. centuries. Yep. Like that. Like you know that that's very much like that. Like. You know, Doc Brown is like blasted into the past, and then the the car rolls up with this like ancient envelope with a yeah. letter from him. You know, like I love stuff like that. Where they like people have like lived their whole lives and in... in a in the blink of an eye. Yeah. <laughs> Marm, and this is Chromo. And Luba here <laughs> fixed you. I said, Madam Luba. Madam Luba fixed me. <laughs> Just Luba will do. <laughs> Impossible. That'd be rude. I should just name him Robot. <laughs> Robot.
<laughs> robot would be funny. I mean, I could, that is tempting. Just the name <laughs> of robot. Is, it is tempting. I like how Luca thinks R66Y is cool. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Chromo. Let's give him a better name. Does he have to be, does I, I, have to sure be Jimbo? I'm, su I'm sure someone... Well, what about Jimbot? I'm sure someone named Chromo can come up with a better. Got, I don't know. Jimbo, I feel like, is 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 right. Jimbo. <laughs> Jimbo. That's perfect. I am Jimbo. <laughs> I mean, think about it. Aside aside from this this uh, text box not being a wood panel. It's, this it's is one a, of the hidden this, gems. <laughs> Like yes. he's, a gym, he's a hidden gem. We found him. We found one of the hidden gems. <laughs> he was Jimbo all along, and only I knew the secret. <laughs> Man. I, w I always loved his theme music, though. Every like, all the theme music in this. Oh, yeah. Good. I mean, we talked about who will stay behind. Um, sorry, Marm. Please be careful. Marmé. Marmalade. I wonder if I've ever not I gotta left pee real quick. I'll be right back here. I mean, I guess Marm can heal. I mean, everyone agrees. Like, everyone likes Luca, or excuse me, Luba, more than Ma, right? Like, does does anyone like Marl more than Luca? Like, it's it's uh, it's hard for me to imagine. Marl all day, every day. I don't know. I always thought Luca was cool. Marl's story's better. I mean, I mean, she certainly plays a, a much more integral role in the plot, other than, you know, Luca, obviously, her invention. I, I think Luca's story is good, but most of it kind of comes through a side. like ice magic but why is Marl casting fire magic on the box I I've never liked the box art for that reason like she's wearing like a purple coat that she never wears alright my my my, my go to party like for end game though Tends to be um, um, Chrono Frog, and I, I've never really known how to say her name. I, 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 Isla. Oh, really? Is that, is that how you the how you say her name? Isla. 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 I I don't know how to say. I've never really known how to say her name. I I, I always said Isla. I I'm not sure if that's right or not. Where am I going here? Yeah, I, I'm really not. I, I've never really had a good handle on how to say her name. Like, like I mean, she's super strong. Yeah. And I, I, I real, I real. I, what I really like is 
the dual tech that she and Chrono can do where she throws Chrono up and then he makes a horizontal line across the, the screen. I feel like that's I, I feel like that's a really useful move that hits pretty hard and tends to do more damage than a lot of other area of effect attacks. Mm -hmm. And then like the, the you know the the cross slash with frog and chrono, and then Isla goes in the middle. That one's pretty strong too. My end of the game was probably was chrono Luca and and frog. Yep, Josh Daniels. That's as that's the same as it was for me. I mean, I don't actually know like that much about like you know like oh who's the best at this, who's the oh, best at that. But, like I, I always just felt like it's just it's, like it's, I was seemed like the the strongest character. Like aside from like Chrono, I guess. Like you know, especially when you get like the rainbow sword, right? And he gets like a critical hit almost every round. But like she's she's pretty strong, and I I like her her techniques, especially the ones that combine with uh, Chrono. You know, as, as cool as it is that Magus joins the party, like, I've never really used him that, that much. Me like, it's, it's definitely really cool. Like, I... I mean, even even having played Mario RPG and Bowser joins the party, like, it was still like a big surprise, I think. Yeah, yeah. Because like he seemed like the main bad guy for a while. Right, know? right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he is the main bad guy for a long time. Of the yeah, game. Well, I mean, what I mean when when you do when you do a quick replay of the game, you, it, like it kind of becomes apparent that it's like, oh, like he actually wasn't the bad guy for that long but yeah, yeah like you know uh, backflash is, really is, good huh backflash in the chat says not gonna lie uh chrono trigger is kind of basic and you know what that's why it's so good yeah that's why it is also aged so well yes there's almost there's nothing annoying in it right i mean there's, there's basically yeah. nothing annoying in this i mean it, it was it was Literally, like, Saki, uh, you know, Hironobu Sakaguchi and uh, Hiromichi Tanaka and uh, Yuji Hori, like, teaming up. And, like, these guys who, like, knew how to make, like, you know, the, the best RPGs and, like, take the best of what each of them knew how to do to make this game, you know? Nothing annoying equals nothing challenging. Not good. Get boring. I mean, I, I, I think by what, what Corey means by annoying is like there's no there's no like weird mechanics or anything. You don't have to spend all this time in menus figuring like you don't have to uh like spend all this time like optimizing your character or your loadout or anything for certain bosses. Mm. Like, I mean, I'll, I'll I've, admit I've, it is it is pretty easy, but again, as I've said, it was like it was my first RPG that wasn't Mario RPG or Pokemon. So it 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 is it it's like the ideal introductory RPG, honestly, because it's got so much like yeah. variety in terms of like locations and characters and um and stuff but it's like it's it's not that complex you know right. but like that's also why dragon quest is so good you yeah. know yeah because it's quote unquote basic you know it's dragon quest is 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 the basics done so good
Chrono Cross's biggest mistake was the idea was a sequel to Trigger. Yeah, I mean, I, I love yeah. Chrono Cross, but what it does with Chrono Trigger's legacy isn't super appealing. <laughs> no. But man, like, you know, it's, it's always a contender for one of the best soundtracks of all time. Oh, yeah. And, and v it visually, visually, it's just an outstanding game. Right. Like, I mean, background it, art it would so be beautiful. real interesting to see what people would think of it now if it didn't have such a good soundtrack. Like, I wonder if people would have memories of it being, like, good because the soundtrack is, like, a, a, like mainly due to the soundtrack being so good. Don't do this to me. Don't do it again. Come on, don't send me all the way back over here. I gotta go through all this again. I mean, I just, I think it would be really interesting to give a uh, Chrono Trigger, like, go back in time and give Chrono, or Chrono Cross, like, a perfectly average, nothing special soundtrack. Yeah, and I wonder and if, if people would still feel as but, that that like it would like it as much. I don't know. I mean, I, I think it's I think it's a good game on its own, but it's it's you know it's its scope is you know can't be compared to Chrono Trigger. Yeah, but I, I kind of like that. I kind of like that it takes place in this like as its own thing. I like that it takes place in this relatively self-contained region, right? Mm hmm Um. But yeah, like, the scope of it just can't compare to Chrono Trigger. And, you know, what it adds to the story is extraordinarily depressing. <laughs> yeah. See, Julian says Xenogears is a better spiritual successor to Chrono Trigger, in my opinion. And I, w I would agree with that. You know, I, I remember playing... Uh, Xeno Gears for the first time and be like, oh, like this, like <laughs> certain little things give it away that makes it feel like there's a lot of the same team members. Really? Involved. See, I never really thought about well, that. Well, the thing, other, other than Mitsuda's soundtrack, of course. Well, for me, it was strangely that uh, you could talk to somebody and they had the dialogue box come up and you could run away. Oh, yeah. That's like I mean, a lot of the games I... let you do that now, but uh, Lunar lets you. Doesn't Lunar? Or wait. I don't think so. No, maybe not. Maybe I'm thinking of something else. But I, I feel like I played something. I, I played something else recently at college. Um, I don't know. Yeah, like that was that was always kind of an interesting feature. Yeah, totally they are extremely different. Yes. But I, I it always annoyed me in uh in Chrono Cross when you have the flashback to the characters and they're like six years old. <laughs> like well, they're like it, they're proportioned like, in a way that makes them look like they're like six years old. Yeah, like I don't I, I don't I don't think they're supposed to be, but I think they were like trying to translate the look of the sprites very literally and it it's it's bizarre yeah like they didn't make them look like they fit into that world like remember there's that one character uh, lucia mm -hmm. who like kind of looks like like an aged up luca but it's not her like there's a lot of weird things like that where it's like oh this character is kind of like this character but it's not this character Right. Yeah. And I've only played that one time all the way through. I've done a, a couple of runs, but I never... I actually like did a new game plus like immediately after finishing it, but I never... Um, I never 100% completed it. Like I never recruited like all, the, all the characters. Character. That yeah. seems like a pain in the butt. I think, I think you have to play it three times to get all the characters. And that's like using a guide, essentially. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I like 
like basically like the like the, the day I beat it or the day after I beat it, like I went to Funko Land and bought the guy because I was like I I want to do New Game Plus. I want to get all the characters. Mm -hmm. I finished it at least one more time, but I never I never went back and did like a third run to get all the because I think there's that choice in the game where you have to get like um. Uh, it's interesting M M McGill or Nikki or I forget who the third character is there's like you have like three choices of like how you go into um, Viper Mansion mm -hmm. have you um, have you ever played any of the Xenosaga games I played some of the the first one I was recently thinking about like how playing one of those would be fun. You know, like I've only played I think in the in the first one I've only played to the point where you like first uh when Cosmos like first like shows up and like fights the Gnosis or whatever when they first was like the Hilbert effect and it has that really good music when she mm -hmm. first like Cosmos like first you know shows off her her true power or her actual yeah, yeah. power. But the music on that part is really good. I, I remember <laughs> my, my memory of, uh, you know, I, yeah, I've only beaten Xeno Saga. I mean, I've only beaten any of them one time, but I, I started a replay of, of Xeno Saga one at some point And, uh, it only got like halfway through on the replay, but I remember the first time I played it, like I got it day one. Mm-hmm. I did too. And and I remember um you know, like the very beginning it's like Shianuzuki, please report to the bridge. And like I literally spent like an hour exploring the ship and talking to all the NPCs before I ever got to the bridge. And I, I think if I remember correctly, there's like there's like a voiceover that like periodically says, Shianuzuki, please report to the bridge. <laughs> It's just been like an hour. Like the the beginning is definitely a little slow, but like it's, you know, especially the first and third games are just like really good. Uh, just like, you know, pretty straightforward, you know, RPG battle systems. The second game, I think is pretty good. You know, a lot of people don't really don't like the second one. I think it's pretty good. Of course, it's been a long time since I played it. So I might find it harder to tolerate now, but like regular encounters can take like 20 minutes, <laughs> like especially later in the game, because you really have to, um, isn't the password XABB? It's Zabie. Oh, what? Z-A-B-I-E. That's, That's what it said on the screen just now. Oh, oh, I see. X A B Y. Got it. Oh, yeah. Oh, I forgot about that. That's kind of tricky. Yeah. But yeah, like regular encounters, because like if I remember, like you, you just have to like. You have to like defend a lot to build up your attack mm -hmm. to be able to do like damage worth anything. Like if you just do a regular attack, it's like worthless. Like you have to like build up your strength over a couple of rounds to be able to do like actually useful. Attack. So it's just it 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 was I recall it being an interesting battle system, but just really time consuming. Jimbo, hurry. How he does that thing where he like opens up.
Yeah, I, you know. Yeah, I totally forgot about that. Like the ZB. What's that? Uh, yeah. The, uh, you know, great. so I, yeah, I never finished, you know, the first Xeno Saga. Um, and it was supposed to be, wasn't it supposed to be like, like five games or something like that? Like, There's were they going to be six going... games? And like, I was, I was so, ex like, I don't think this was actually the plan, but I assumed that five was going to be a remake of Xenogears. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think everybody thought so. Right. But I don't think that was actually the plan. No, no. But, like, I thought, like, oh my gosh, like, that's going to be amazing. Yeah. I I, uh, I had a, a joke in my head. Like, I think, it, I, maybe I said it to you. But, uh, like, what if it, when you finish Xenoblade Chronicles 3, it was, like, Xenogears Episode 9, the, <laughs> the end. <laughs> You know, like, wouldn't it be really funny if they just, like, did that? It would be funny. Like, I'm just, like, out of nowhere. Or, like, like, if randomly, like, Xeno, Xeno, like, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 ended up being, like, Xenogears Episode 5. Yeah, well, like, Xenogears, epi well, Episode 5 was, was Xenogears. I know, I know, I know. But, but like, would, what if, be... what if, what if, what if when Xenoblade 2 came out, they were like, they were like trying to pass it off as like, oh, this is, this is, this is like, this is, the, this is the remake of Fox. It's like, this, there's <laughs> nothing, there's nothing at all similar about these games. Yeah. <laughs> but they're like, oh, yeah. Like, I mean, I think, I, I think, um, I'm drawing a blank on the guy's name. It does all the Xeno games, um, but I, if I recall correctly, I think he said, like, I think he said that, like, when he called that Xeno Gears episode five, like, like there was no like plan in his no. head for like what the rest of those stories were. Surely not. But like, he was just inspired by like the first Star Wars yeah. being episode four, right? Mm -hmm. And he just thought. He just thought that would be a cool thing to do, like to just envision, like, oh, well, like, what if, what if there were all these other episodes that, you know, don't exist, but like you imagine they exist, right? Yeah, you know, if you, when you think about it, though, all these games, Xenogears, Xenoblade, they are all the Xeno Saga. <laughs> Yes, they are. <laughs> and, you know, thinking about it, the only Xeno game that I haven't beaten is Xenoblade 2. Oh, yeah. Thinking about it. Now you're going to have to... Well, well, you're like, well, now... Uh, I mean, I was not really <laughs> enjoying what I played. I know. But. Although I guess there's also like, um, like I don't know if it's like kind of considered almost a separate game like Torna the Lost. Yeah, whatever. it's like a prequel, I think. And then there's also like the sequel con, like the the extra content in Xenoblade Remastered. I haven't played that. Hmm. It, was there? Did did it ever actually come out? Was the wasn't there a DS version or was it GBA? I think it was. Wasn't there like a DS version of Xenosaga One? In, in like Japan, it only came maybe, out in Japan. Maybe a... Like I feel like it was in development. I can't remember if it. I can't remember if it released or not, and like how similar it is. A oh, DS version of Xeno Saga. <laughs> Luba's One like hanging on your shorts. Huh? Luba is like hanging hang on, on your, your shorts. shorts. <laughs> <laughs> Would you would you trust Luba if Luba said, "Hang on to your shorts"? I don't know. Or would you just be like, "Come on, Luba's Luba's such a, such a joke." Yeah. Who? I ain't gonna hold on to my shorts, and then then you're gonna regret it because you'll you'll lose your shorts. <laughs> I you know I love that this is the end of the time and it's just a guy like with a cane and top hat like. Or like a uh, like a pork pie hat type at the end of end of time. Yeah, just, only just... as one of the wise men. Yeah.
I just I I love that. He's 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 Gaspar, I think. It's just, it's just cool, the idea of when there's nothing left. All it is is just this yeah. street. Like in a, in a town square, just like floating in the middle of nothingness. I've never like fully parsed the graphics of like where those like sparkle points are. Like one on the, one on the right, I think is supposed to be a bucket and the other is just like, what, a plant? One of them, I think, takes you to Lavos. Hmm. But the other, I, I forget. <laughs> Who will it be, Chromo? Plain Sam says, some say Xenoblade X on the Wii U is, is one of the best in the series. I mean, from a gameplay standpoint, I think it is the best. Um... The only thing was like later in the game when there's such a focus on mech combat, I I felt like the game never really explained how to equip your mech. I never really understood it. And so I, I wasn't as engaged with the mech combat, but I feel like the like on foot combat with like the, the ranged weapon and the melee weapon and like coordinating with your party members, I, I feel is like one of the most satisfying like real-time rpg combat systems i've ever experienced and, like the class system was like extremely satisfying to um was extremely satisfying to uh, uh you know kind of master the classes and then combine their like weapon types and abilities and stuff um but uh, Saver says, you thought X has the best combat, but didn't get into two. Blasphemy. I mean, with two, what kind of bugged me, and, and maybe this, like, it might expand later in the game, but it didn't feel like it was going to, and that was kind of just why I just lost interest. Like, I didn't like how, you know, you, you summon your Pokemon, right? And they have, like, four abilities. Mm -hmm. And, like, Pokemon. And, uh... Like, I felt like those, like, four attacks that you could do with that Pokemon or Blade or whatever it's called, like, they weren't that interesting to work with. And, um, like, you couldn't, at least early in the game, you oh. couldn't, you couldn't, like, switch to another Pokemon Blade. And, like, do a combo from one blade to the next. If you could, that would be interesting. But... You don't have to do anything in here, I don't think, because you've already learned all the magic. Like, remember, he starts off as just, like, the little sheep guy. Right. And there's one... He says this here. combat in two was actually really awesome, but such a slow burn. They really should have opened it up a lot sooner. Yeah, it just like it just felt like it was not. It it just it just it felt like it wasn't ever going to go anywhere interesting gameplay wise, and so I just I just I just lost interest. Before you go take a peek inside the room behind me, that's what I was doing. I kind of had the same situation with. Botan Kato's Origins where like it just it felt like the combat like I loved the combat in the first game and it felt like the combat oh clockwise into uh, something I was going counter I know I was I I know I don't know what what I'm thinking oh. you're right I was like <laughs> I, I wasn't, wasn't starting I wasn't at the thinking top. about it either yeah From the door, clockwise, three times. Sorry, it was uh, 
certainly stupid of me. What what is what what do you get from I don't doing know. this? I have no idea. Like you like if I were like on your first run like Chrono like can it, none of these characters can use magic, right? Until until you talk to him, right? Or can they? I don't remember. I think I think they don't have magic at all. Like I want to say they might not even have like their like little water, fire, lightning things in the menu. Wait, in this it, it says right there are their names. I know, but like before Oh, they did. before you get to him in your first run. I I forget. I could be wrong. No, Dimensium says no one can use the magic until dealing with Spikio. They do have huh. the text. Oh, okay. Yeah, that, that's what I thought. I remember being a little confused here the first time because I'm like, well, why would I go to 1000 AD? That's not going to get me anywhere new. But it dumps you out like in a different part of the world. Right. And so I remember being kind of confused by that. Anyone in the chat or Emily going to be at the Retro Game Con in New York next month? Uh, I'm no. I'm not, I, I would I'm like not to go. Um, I thought we would get invited like, uh, years ago, but it never came to fruition. It would be cool because, like in Syracuse, that would have been pretty. Yeah, cool. I think the one convention we're going to this year. Well, no, we well we, yeah, music we, we're City going Malta. to because we went uh, we went to Midwest Gaming Classic in April. April I guess yeah. it was. And we're um, we're uh, we're going to the uh, the Music City Multicon near Nashville. Yeah, at the um, at, at the end of next month. Yeah, um, it's it's gonna be fun. You know, my my wife and kids are going. That's that's kind of funny. Yeah, you know who know who's gonna be there? Because it's not uh, just like video game guests. So, someone your kids are excited to see? I I I mean no. <laughs> but I I bet you that you'll be excited. Well, who's going to be there? Danny Trejo. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. That's kind of funny. Yeah. <laughs> and uh but my yeah, but my uh uh my wife and kids are going to go because this is the first time, like, usually, like, we are, like, scheduled to have, like, uh, we have, like, one hotel room. We got to share a hotel room, usually, you and I. Mm -hmm. But this time, they're like, oh, you know, we'll get you, because they, like, locked us in, like, fairly early. Like, oh, oh so you I guys have my get... own room? Yeah, we both have our own rooms. And I'm oh, like, well, if that's, that's going to happen, happened. like, I'm going to tell my my wife and kids to come. I'm going to bring them. And my, you know, my kids have like, never really, they, I guess they've been to Comic Con. Well, I mean, you sh you showed me you showed me a picture of oh well, yeah your, I mean, my... your daughter in a in a Moogle costume. Yeah, when she like, was when she was a baby. Yeah, when she was a baby. Yeah, she was like five for, months like, old. Like New York Comic Con. Yeah. Um, but for this, I was like, oh, you guys should just come down because. Even if they don't spend all day at the at the convention, then they can um, like just go around like Nashville and do other stuff, you know. Well, Madonna Sheevy says she's going to be in Nashville in October. Just are you going well, to Nashville? Are you going if, to Nashville if, if, for if this? If you're going to be there the weekend of of the Music City Multicon, you should you should come see us. Yeah. Uh, what what weekend is it? It's like the last weekend. Yeah, right? yeah, it's like the twenty like the twenty eighth or something like that. Let me uh, you know who else is gonna be there? Is um, uh, Classic Game Room, who is like oh like, really? It says yeah, uh, Mark 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 Bustler is gonna be there. But I I feel like he has done is like he... other stuff. But he I think that he's um, like yeah, I thought he like retired. 
Well, he was like doing other things, but I think that he's been making a return to video game content. Although, I, it might have just been like a fleeting thing, but he's going to be there. So I wonder if he like lives there. But uh, but but Retro Tech Steve is going to be there. Yeah. And it's, it's uh, and Chris from Displaced Gamers lives there, so he's probably just going to come out and hang out. Too. It's uh, October twenty seventh to twenty ninth. Yeah. So that uh, that's a Friday through Sunday. Oh, he's narrating the upcoming Toplin documentary. Is that the one that um, like Shmup Master is doing? Is that what it is? Um, but yeah, there's like other people, you know, like, I mean, <laughs> my son is like way into Dragon Ball Z or Dragon Ball, not Z. He's like way into Dragon Ball uh, Super right now. He's like, he's so, so into it. Is there, is there something, something? No, but I mean, I'm sure that he's going to be real excited about Like, I'm sure there's going to be plenty of Dragon Ball yeah. things for sale. Yeah. So he's pretty excited about it. And it being so close to Halloween, you know, they can... They haven't really picked their uh, their Halloween costumes yet. Maybe they could find something that... So they can wear. Would, would work for both, you know? Yeah, Shmup Junkie, that's right. Shmup Junkie is the one that's working on that. Is your wife like excited at all? Um, about the convention? No. Yeah. <laughs> not not so much the convention. Uh, Are your kids I, excited? I think that they're excited. I mean, I, I I don't know if they know what to expect, especially you know in a situation where you know like we're gonna be. I don't know. It's just like a different side of them, or decide different side of me that they've like never seen like in person anyway. like yeah. not seen like yeah yeah so it should, it should be pretty neat are you, are you going to do anything else like with your family like in the area um well i mean if we're just at the thing probably not i mean if we're just I, we're just going down for the duration of it like, they might do other things. Hmm. Try the aura world. Yeah, I mean, he he's, he's way into Dragon Ball uh, Super. I think that I impress him when I, like, know the names of characters, even though I've never really yeah, watched you, it. I just, like, I, I, I just picked them up before, you know? Well, yeah, well, I mean, but, yeah, I mean, I, you know, most people know, like, most of the main characters of right. Dragon Ball Z, whether you've really watched it or not. I mean, I feel like it, like, just from for, for our age, like, you, you knew enough people that were into it that, you know, you're you're just going to have absorbed some of it. You know, you know your your Goku's and your Vegeta's and your Freezes and your Piccolo's. <laughs> yeah, just just absorb it. Uh, no plans on doing anything uh, on the Xbox Eon device. I no. mean, I I'm curious if it's like any different than like anything else. No, I mean it's, it's like two hundred dollars, right? Yeah, it feels really expensive for. Yeah, I mean it. What it is? No one should be under any illusion that it's like tapping some like signal that's anything special. Yeah, that's worth that price. Like, you'd just be better off buying any other scaler that you could plug into. You'd be better off buying a, you know, an OSSC. Yeah. And plugging component cables into it. And you could then use it with multiple other things. And you'd have spent less money. Like I, I don't I don't need to look at it to know that it's not worth what they're charging. 
an antipod it does. Whoa. Everyone, you know, has their own needs for their, their setup, but that one's not appealing to me in any way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is dope. You guys playing over the internet? We're playing, like, through the internet right now. We're all I, controlling I... different characters. Through the internet. Through the power of these connected tubes. I, I I love the idea that like 4 a.m. laundry is like actually from like 1995. And it's like <laughs> it's like 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 someone like you know helped him time travel into 2023 and like sat him down in front of a computer and was like, look, like this game Chrono Trigger just came out on the Super Nintendo. And these but these dudes in 2023 are playing it through the internet. <laughs> Like what? So for him, Laundry says, "Yeah, that's that's what I meant. I actually am." <laughs> am I going back to? I think you're going back to Frog's time at this point. Yeah. I forget why. Was it because, like, was it something Melchior said? Probably, like, oh, sword, something, something, something. Mass, yeah. m mass immune, as I called it when I first got this yeah, game. I mean, that's what I call it, too. I, I call it, The yeah. mass immune. Well, I mean, you know what's even more embarrassing is... I, I think I might call it, like, like well, maybe... Isn't but there's like a like a like a Mirasame or Mirasame or something. Mirasame. Yeah, I call that. I definitely call that the Mirasame at one point. Mirasame. Yeah. Yeah, but Ma Master. I mean, this was this was the first time that I had come across that name. And again. Yeah. And you know, I, I it never occurred to me that like, oh, this is supposed to be pronounced, you know, this this other way and yeah. Ma Masamune and uh, <laughs> what's even more embarrassing is like you know uh, you know probably a year or two after I got into this game um, me and my um, my high school friends you know we, we started you know getting into making movies you know, for class projects and stuff. And we had to do a, uh, like a history video. And like in the video, like you had to like, you had to say like these, like, it, it was like, it was like, it was like specifically about like middle ages and stuff. And you had to, you had to make, uh, in the video, you know, we had to say like words like, you know, like fiefdom or, or squire or so like there were like a list of words that had to be said at some point during this video production right like solar was solar one of them like sid solar <laughs> no no but like you know like you know words that had to do with like the hierarchy of like medieval society and stuff like that and um uh, so we did this like really elaborate, like, you know, cause we always did, we always did these like really elaborate things and, you know, we, we had, had you know, this, this, you know, swords and, and stuff and, and, you know, like I, we, we, we call the legendary sword in this, in this, in this, you know, high school movie project, <laughs> we, we call it the mass immune. It's like, oh, I, I'm not strong enough to wield the legendary mass immune. You know, the, the, the mass immune was was lost, you know, <laughs> to when when Sir Peter was killed many years ago. Sir Peter, <laughs> the mass immune.
But yeah, it was it was a long time later that I learned that oh, this like has Japanese origins and should be said in a very different way. <laughs> Cause like when I mean when you were like playing when you were playing these games originally, like you know, when you play them later, like maybe after you oh, learn more things and, Huh? Oh Chromo. Oh Chromo. <laughs> I've let down my kingdom, Chromo. But like when you when you like go back to these games like much later, like you start to realize like, oh, like this word was actually inspired by this thing from mm. history or this thing from mythology or something like that. Right. Yeah. But like when you were originally playing these Japanese RPGs and stuff oh. like, yeah. Did, were, did you just think these were like completely all this stuff was like just completely made up totally. words with like no basis yeah i i mean anything most for most stuff yeah i mean just I, yeah same like like i just thought like oh like this character's name before or this we get to google name it. like yeah. it's just it's just like we some can... some letters that sounded really cool together right yeah. yep. like it wasn't it's like 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 everything here is like these like completely original ideas like yeah. when you're young like and you haven't learned certain things in school yet like that's what you think yeah. And I thought I thought Mass Immune was just another one of those. It's mm -hmm. just like, oh the legendary sword Mass Immune. <laughs> and then you start learning like, oh, this thing comes from, you know, mythology or you know, like, oh, like uh, this name is like actually borrowed from some historical figure or something. Uh there was uh there was a, a, a twenty Euros from Andy 64 and I'm I'm a, I was about to say something that I think is addressed at the uh at the at the start of uh of of this comment because I was about to say wait a second I didn't think Andy 64 lived in Europe and he says hey guys long time no see I'm living in Europe <laughs> <laughs> and it's hard to watch the stream live these days because of the time zone but I'm always checking the recordings later. Thanks for keeping them available on the channel. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know if you noticed that we've uh, started doing it a bit differently. Where we're, we've been, we, we, we're, we're still in the process. Yeah, we only got um, 130 left to actually put the time codes on. You know, uh, um, but wait, but, but, but there's still several that still need to be put live. Right. Oh, there's oh. yeah. I mean, I don't want to just like do a huge. I I am trying to only do between like five and ten a day, mm -hmm. or per like session. But uh, you know, like Scott Snyder is just like doing so many that I just I can't put them all live. Uh, until oh, like, so he's doing time. comments on ones that you still haven't even put public yet. Correct. Like, cause he's, just doing, he's just doing so many. But yeah, well, that, well, that, I mean, that's helping you get ahead. Yeah, yeah. And there's I, something like 130 left that need it. Although, the, the, you know, those are all not live. I'm just these are all in a, a playlist, and I'm taking them off that playlist. Um, as uh, as I put the information in. <sighs> but but yeah, I mean it's um, I think it's gonna be a good thing in the long run for the streams to be public like that because that's just like how that's how the YouTube system is designed to work now. But it wasn't that way when you know it wasn't that way when we started doing. It. That's why we had them in the um, that's why I had them in the public unlisted, but in the public playlist. Yeah. But, it's so, so it's a bit of an awkward transition period, uh, moving yeah. those over, but I think it'll be it'll it'll be good. Yeah, it's 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 moving, little by little. It's taking some time, but uh, have you done like ha or like half of them public now? Oh, I don't know how many are public. I just know there's 130 that need to have the uh, be time coded. So what I'm doing or what we've been doing is uh, going through every stream and making it so that there's chapter marks for each game played. And also, like, just the bit at the beginning where we're just talking. Mm. 
so people can jump to like what they want to see. And it's it's cool because it also increases like the searchability for them, I think, because even though only the headline game is in the title, uh, there's like a lot of like a lot of times there's a bunch of other stuff being played. Mm. Yeah, or you know sometimes Scott's been good at at noting particular like topics of interest that maybe come yeah up but when it's like in the middle of a game like i'll keep that, that that'll be in the comments a lot of times but i'm not putting it as a chapter as their own chapter ah, for okay. that stuff so but you, but you can still find that in his comment yes which is useful okay. exactly okay. what am i supposed to be doing here here we just want to see the king are, like, i don't understand are you How supposed to go back to the bridge now he just arrived a moment ago to meet the king, and then he's not up there. Did did you just like mash through it while we were talking, and like didn't realize he already left? Maybe. So I must have sent the boy to us. But I went back to the bridge already. I Search don't want to remember the what the next step is. Is it is it Magus or is it, I always said Magus like growing growing up, or is it Magus? I always I, I said Magus, but I I say Magus now. Hmm. Well, in terms of like. You know, you're saying for Alligator Hunter. Like, for in terms of those, I just do it per, like, cartridge played. I can't, I can't go forward, though. Does the hero alone have the power to take on Magus' army? Here's a... Oh. Why is it not triggering here? Uh, surely, I... with 411 people watching you play Chrono Trigger, one of, you know, the most beloved <laughs> games of all time, surely someone knows what your next step is, and we're just forgetting it. I mean, Magus is like like a generic word for like a, a mage or a wizard, right? Like a magus, right? Right. Go to the castle. Oh, I mean, castle that's not, that's not even his okay. real name. You know, that's another case of those where he's just called, you know, he's Thank called you. magus in this time period. I saw the chef. I didn't get the meat though. You know, all, all these troops need to get their strength back. It's a little beef jerky. <laughs> They, they just need to, we just need to give them like each their own little packet of Jack's links. <laughs> <laughs> That's all they need. Get it? Come on now. Did you? That didn't make like a you got an item sound? It didn't, didn't say anything. No, this was not 1992. This was 95. This was later Super Nintendo. Oh, Sam Connolly says he'll chase after you when you try to leave. Right. 
Really? Oh, wait! <laughs> just one piece of jerky. One jerky, and it's just like... I want a power tab. <laughs> that, that's that's all. It is interesting though because need. you know when was this 94, 95? And I'm not sure if it was ninety four in Japan or not. I think it was ninety five here though, right? But it's just it's interesting to think about how uh, it was a big deal that it was like being re-released on the uh, on the PS1 and it wasn't even that long of a m amount of time since it came out I mean I think it came out on the PS1 Japan a lot so, you know, I, I got the, uh, so it came out in 9-5 in but both still, countries I mean, March in Japan, August here it came out on the PS1 like probably less than 5 years yeah after it, originally it came out came on out. PS1 in, in Japan in 99 then here in 2001, it was after the PS2 was all. <laughs> Not a bag of Jack Link strips. <laughs> Sir Chromo. <laughs> Is that food for us? No. It's, it's mine. I love this stuff. <laughs> this is this one jerky. He has saved us all with this one jerky. What is going on here? I mean, that's what I'm gonna say to my kids when they're like upset about something. I'm gonna say, stop sniveling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a great ba background right here. I guess. Oh yeah. Another one of the good ones in this. Yeah, just like those rays of light. Mm -hmm. Piercing the darkness. Yeah. Oh, it's Ozzy. Do, do you think they were... Uh... They were trying to to recreate the the feel of the bat the the battle on the big bridge with this. Yeah, I mean that's what I always thought of it as. I mean, not always because you probably played Final Fantasy V after you played this. Right. I thought. You ever wish you could just like New Game Plus through life? <laughs> Where you just uh, keep all the knowledge. <laughs> you just get to do it all again. Yeah. All the knowledge and all the wealth that you've may, may have possibly accumulated. All the spells, I mean, all the. I I I, I feel HD. like New Game Plus like items. kind of bums, like modern New Game Plus kind of bums me out. Like I understand why it is the way it is, but like it, it seems like New Game Plus is always like, oh, you get to keep these things, but the game is also like a lot harder. Yeah, and like the the appeal of New Game Plus to me. Which this game was my introduction to new game. I mean, this is like one of the first ones I can think of that actually did it. Yeah, it's the first one. I, I don't think it was the absolute first, but it's the first that, that I think of. Like, like it, it definitely, I think, set the trend. Mm hmm. Um. But, uh. I, I, I like the idea of.
and Zombor. I, I, I like the idea of just like seeing like, okay, like how quickly can you actually get through the events of this game or when everything is dead easy, right? And I realize like, yeah, there's no challenge anymore or anything, mm -hmm. but I, but that's, I used that's to find like that really it. fun. Like I ran through Resident Evil 4 so many times now. Like just like get the Chicago typewriter or the infinite launcher mm -hmm. and just like, just just run through the game in a couple of hours like that was great yeah loved it yeah i mean that's what i that's what i like about it too is i don't do it for the challenge it's just like it makes it real easy to just like enjoy the game right but nowadays like like you know there's like a lot of like thought of like game design that goes into the new game plus experience and right. you know it's like you know, there, there's like much more restrictions on what actually carries over now. And like the, the enemies are twice as hard and, you know, uh, oh, and playing through yeah, it. I and mean, you honestly, actually just through ending, doing that. you know, that kind of stuff. Like, it's like, uh, I, I just want New Game Plus to be easy mode or like easy mode for going through and like collecting everything again or easy mode for like unlocking the extra enemies. I don't, I'm not looking for a challenge out of New Game Plus. Like, right. I, I would rather, I would rather, in fact, I always thought it was weird, like, um, with stuff like, like Resident Evil 5, for instance, was like, it was kind of strange to me, um, that there was, like, no built-in way, like, sort of, like, deleting your file to, mm -hmm. like, do, like, a clean run or I guess it wasn't impossible you had to like delete you had to like delete all of your your you had to like sell all your stuff before starting a new game right uh to do like a clean professional run right like the hard mode was designed to be done with the stuff that you acquired on other difficulty modes Mm -hmm. I always thought that was strange. Like, is that, like that might have been becoming somewhat common at the time, but it was it was strange to me because yeah. I like ha I hadn't really had like the HD consoles for that long at that point. So, like the way that it managed like saves and stuff was strange. I was like, why can't I just play professional like the hard difficulty mode, like? play it like a new game like and i did that as like a challenge run but like in my mind that shouldn't have been like a challenge that should have just been the normal way to do it like it, like it was very strange to me when things started getting in this in this way where um uh where, where they start getting in this way where like like your your save data like has all this information and there's like no way to just like like I don't know, you know what I mean? Like where where it was like I don't know, like it was just it was strange to me where it was like, oh like all this stuff is tied to your file now and there's no way to just do like a just like a regular old new game now. Right. Like, I, I feel like I started coming, becoming common at a point. It was, like, really sh hard for me to understand that. Like, it wasn't, like, just, like, saving different saves and stuff. Yeah. The appeal of, of the new game plus is being able to just, like, replay the game without any other resistance. real challenge. Yeah, without any, without any resistance. And there's there's nothing like, wrong with that. No! Like, like I, a lot of people have said, like, I've talked to people, like, oh, like, it's so playing through Resident Evil That's 4 correct. with the Chicago typewriter is... It's me, so Grog! <laughs> Tis thee, Chromo! <laughs> Thou art here to practice thy skill in sword play? Sword play? <laughs> <laughs> yes! <laughs> Grog likes this. Grog fine <laughs> sword. <laughs> I can't tell if we're trying to do Yoda or just some <laughs> silly voice. 
<laughs> you know what might be a I good stopping point? <laughs> it was all for naught. <laughs> Kermit the Yoda. Uh, you know what might be a good stopping point? Is like saving right before. Oh, geez, the... I realize it's 11 30. I know, like it got, like you really stuck on it. Like it, I don't know how close you are. Oh, you're probably not that close because you have to do like the mass immune. And I have to do like <laughs> have, the stuff in the past to fight too, don't I? Massa and Mune. Yes. Uh, so you're probably not that close, but I was gonna say like you know, it would be. I mean, maybe if you had like time to continue like tomorrow morning or something, like you should have a save that's right before the cutscene. Uh, uh, where it like shows like Magus's tower. Yeah. Cause like not only is that so iconic, but it's also like it's also used in like aspect rate ratio correction comparisons, like a lot. Yeah, yeah. Have you yeah. ever seen it? Well, like, yeah, like the, the, the circle. Yeah, right. Right, because circle it's it's oval. it's like when it, it like when you actually do like the correct pixel aspect ratio. Yeah. Uh, it, it is, uh, oh, I forgot about that kid. Um, he, he looks straight out of Dragon Quest. Oh, yeah. 100%. Like, like, he's like, he's like the young version of the five heroes. Yes, exactly. Isn't his name like Toma or something like that? Toma? Tis I, Toma. Yes, Toma. <laughs> Chromo, Chromo Triggle. Cro Chromo Triggle. <laughs> <laughs> it's this this game is it's it's Chrono Trigger stunt double. <laughs> the entire game is, is the stunt double. Yeah, I just like the idea of every time you. If you if you name Chrono Chromo, like every time he turns around and you see his face, he just like has like a little pixel cigar in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna see if I can finish this part. Considering that all bosses take me two hits to kill. Can can, can someone uh, can someone make a, a sprite edit of, of Chrono with his like Five o'clock shadow and, and cigar <laughs> for our for our Discord. I mean that would be really funny if someone made sprite versions of like it called them like the names that we're giving them. Yeah, yeah, that was like with, the that was like the command to use the emote. Like like maybe make it just their heads so that it's like bigger, you know? Yeah, like a five o'clock shadow smoking a cigar. <laughs> It can, it can, you know, Chromo can be one of our new reaction images. <laughs> Chromo. <laughs> it's your boy you know, Chromo. Wouldn't would it be great if, like, the PS1 version of the game was actually called Chromo Trigger? <laughs> <laughs> or Chromo Triggle? Yeah, like, that's the... That's, like, like, the actual, like, it was, like, a mistake. <laughs> they like, But it actually got, like... Like the the title screen <laughs> in the game, or like the the spine art says says cr cr Chromo Trigger. <laughs> I mean, it's just like it's such a random thing, and that's what makes it funny, I guess, because it was like an accident, really. Chromo Trigger. You just never know when an accident in spelling can guide like how an entire stream will go. <laughs> Because, I mean, I feel like this stream was at least ten times more enjoyable because of because of the uh, the spelling. Yes. I mean, look at look at the... Uh, I love that rainbow there. It's, it's so subtle. It is so subtle, but it's just like, oh, that's kind of a neat thing they have in there. It flickers a little, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, give give Marn a mustache like Groucho Marx. Yeah, <laughs> and we can find pictures of like the uh, the stunt doubles. That would be that would be very funny.
Is it is it Nasa and Mune that are like here? Oh, like I love that background too. I think they are. Really, like stuff like that just makes the world seem so big, which I think is yeah. And you you never think of the world as like this huge place, based on everything that you've experienced like up to this point. But when you see mm -hmm. like vistas like that, you know yes. that just it adds so much to the game. It adds so much. Yeah, I think this is where Masa and Mune is. Okay. Like when they combine is like when like the first time you hear like the big boss music. Oh, okay. You know the you know that one, right? No, I I don't. That's like doesn't. Well, you're going to hear it soon. <laughs> um, Atari Fuzz, I'm, I'm actually playing on my, my childhood copy of the game. My release day childhood copy. Yep. <laughs> Not Gary says, I think that'll go down as the Chromo cover song. <laughs> Someone should take that and make a yeah. MSU one hack with you do, <laughs> doing that. Like, just that sound file. Yeah, file over yeah. And over again. Oh, you know what? So, this is really funny. So, um, uh, there was a comment uh, several weeks ago on one of the ROM hack videos. It said one of my favorite, like you know, super minor change ROM hacks. Oh there's, yeah. There's a Chrono Trigger ROM hack called Unsightly Pixel. Yeah. There's like a pixel on the world map that just like shouldn't be there. It, does it, it follow you all the time? Huh? Does it follow you all the time? No, it's just it's just there. It's just it's just it's just a pixel. That is like out of sync with the tiling. That's and like I've never noticed it. It well, it might be in a couple of spots, not just one, but mm -hmm. like so I, I never noticed it either. But a, a few months ago, I or actually, well, I don't know. It, it was several months ago. I I mountains made are a nice. New, I, just like I made this. a new wallpaper for my computer uh, that was uh, on my left monitor has the Chrono Trigger world map, like specifically like the, the continent with like, you know, where you, the area where you start the game, how you have the castle and the, the fairgrounds and stuff. Um, and then on my right monitor, I have a, a picture of like Link's house and Link to the past. And like, because this has been my wallpaper, I noticed that like just south of like the fountain that's like in the middle of the town where you start, there's like a random brown pixel. <laughs> and like over the months, I've been looking at that pixel and being like, is that supposed to be there? <laughs> like, it doesn't look like it should be there. And then I'm, I kept wondering and wondering and wondering, like, I should boot up the game sometime and, like, see if that pixel is, like, actually there. If that's, like, because I think I got got the back. I just, like, copied the background off of, like, VGMaps.com or something. And, like, you know, and then scaled it up to make as my wallpaper with a correct pixel aspect ratio, mind you. And um, I was like, I just, I just. I just kept looking at it. I'm like, it's got to be a mistake in like how the, the sprite was ripped or something. And then there was that comment on that video after I've been thinking about this pixel for months. <laughs> and I'll, it was like, it's like there's a Chrono Trigger ROM hack called Unsightly Pixel what that a fixes one pixel on the world map. <laughs> and 
and I looked it up on like, you know, robhacking.net or whatever. And there's a screenshot that shows the exact pixel I'd been looking at on my <laughs> desktop wallpaper for months. <laughs> it shows one side is there, on the other side, the unsightly pixel is gone. <laughs> crazy I just thought that was pixel. very funny. Ooh, they did the cross slash. I mean, they did 11 HP. 11 damage. <laughs> what? This is... First of all, I don't know that much about Frog Fractions, and I forgot that Frog Fractions 2 was a thing. I, I know it's like some crazy absurd thing. Uh, but Adam Zero says, Frog Fractions 2 has extra content if you import a Mass Effect 2 save into it. How did anybody fi find that out? <laughs> I find that very amusing. This game was seventy-two bucks at Media Play in nineteen in ninety-five. Yeah, I mean, it was definitely. I'm pretty sure I got it for sixty-nine ninety-nine at Electronics Boutique. Yeah, I mean, which is crazy when you think about it. Games weren't cheap back then. I mean, people think like, oh, you know, things are so expensive. But I love to just really be like, not. oh, you know, it was not. Comparatively. Yeah. But, and, and, you know, that's about the price that I paid for it used. It's just that, like, it was, it, it was a big mental hurdle for me to get over at the time, thinking, like, I'm paying the price that, like, this game would have been new, but I'm only getting the cartridge. Yeah. But, you know? If you, it, if it was you go worth through it. my old, uh, if you, uh, the birthday uh, live stream that I did in 2000, in 2021, I think. Uh, there's a part part towards the end where I like unbox like a lot of bunch of my like childhood games, and I do this and I go through like the manual and like all the stuff I have with it. Well, wow, Verducci man says I got it for 45 years. I mean that must have been like. Okay, if it, yeah, if it was a year or two of it being it out, was. because I mean, I got this, I got this in probably, I would guess ninety eight or ninety nine, and it was already like seventy five bucks used. Yeah, hang on, let me look at the uh, the card here, the registration card. It's like, yeah, okay, so where it says like on the back here, um. It says, so you need more adventure in your life. Final Fantasy three for $79. Breath of Fire is $69. Secret of Mana is $69. And Final Fantasy two is $69. I mean, that's crazy when you think about it. You know, those yeah. are... I mean, I remember, I, I want to say I got Super Mario RPG at Best Buy for like $52. Like, maybe a month after it came out. Like, I rented it the day it came out. Mm -hmm. But I... I didn't get it until like a month or two later. Or it was probably only about a month later, but it felt like a long time at the time. Um, and, uh, but like, I remember like everywhere else, it was like, it was like 70 bucks. And like, for some reason it was like 50 some dollars at Best Buy. It was like an especially good deal because I lived in Delaware at the time and there's no sales tax in Delaware. That was that was the place to be. To be buying RPGs. Yeah. But you get your money's worth. Oh, yeah. I mean, that was like the... Well, I mean, not only did you get your money's worth of the, for the game itself, but in, in my case, it was like... You know, it, was, it was the game that made me fall in love with RPGs. Yeah, right. And I, I made ultimately made back the money by, you know, being compelled to buy a bunch of Squaresoft games and games like Earthbound. I got Earthbound for 35 bucks at Funko, mm -hmm. you know, because I fell in love with this game. I, I spent 75 bucks on it. Card only. Yes. But because of that, I fell in love with RPGs and therefore 
bought a lot of RPGs for a much better price than you would have bought them for years later. Oh, we got a uh, we got a five dollar super chat from Gimpy Lee. Thank you, Gimpy. Thank you. Saying love your vids. I'm going to Japan next month and plan on doing some retro shopping. Do I need a retro RGB before I buy a used Super Famicom there? Right. Well, I I'm not sure which retro RGB is a website. <laughs> um. Uh, I, I I'm not sure what you mean by retro RGB specifically. Um, but you, I mean, you can use a Super Famicom, um, without issue in America. Um, <clears throat> you can even use the official power supply if you want. Um, I, I think, um, oh, upscaler. oh, sorry, I'm in an upscaler. Uh, no, uh, you don't, um, ne necessarily. Um, I mean, is, is it like your first, um, like, is it, is it your first, like, retro system? Um, I mean, don't go looking for, like, and if you mean, like, XRGB, like, a Frame Meister or something, like, don't go looking for that in Japan, because those are, like, way expensive. Like, Frame Meister is not the way today. Uh, there are better options. Um, you know, Imagine calling I, I, your own child a scoundrel. Scoundrel! <laughs> um, uh, I mean, you know, today you would want to look at like a RetroTink or an OSSC or something like that. Um, you know, so, you know, at, at, the, at the very least, I would recommend um, you know, like a RetroTink 2X at the minimum or uh, an OSSC or if you're if you're willing to invest definitely RetroTink 5X is excellent um, and then you'll want to look into either getting HD RetroVision component cables or you'll want to look into getting uh, some RGB SCART cables for that uh, you know the, the most readily available SCART cables that are good quality right now uh, I believe are the the, the uh, Insurrection Industries SCART cables, so that's an option, or the the the, um, the uh, re HD Retrovision component cables are also a great option. <clears throat> what does this mean, Chromo? Uh, well, like you don't need to worry about like the power. Like you can use a Super Famicom power supply in America. I, don't you don't do this without checking. There's people in the chat who can probably confirm this. I'm pretty sure you can use an NES power supply with a Famicom. But I'm not 100% positive. Don't quote me on that. Um, like, like an American NES power supply with a family car. I think that's okay. I think, but I'm not positive. Um, but you, you definitely want to use like a good power supply. Like the official ones are usually good. But you don't want to use like a cheap like power supply that you'd get from like, like, a, like Amazon or used game store. Uh, these days um but like if the system itself comes with like composite cables and a power supply you can you can get started um you know you can use composite cables with like RetroTink 2x if you want to do something start with something a little more affordable or you can do it with the 5x but the 5x is overkill if all you're going to use is composite i would definitely recommend upgrading to rgb or component if you're going to go for a 5x or if you're going to wait for the 4K, we don't know the price of the 4K yet. Um, but yeah, I mean, Super Famicom, um, you know, pretty easy to use. But keep in mind, you won't be able to play Super Nintendo games, like American Super Nintendo games, on a Super Famicom without an adapter. I'm looking for Melchior's house. Um, but you can, you know, if, you know, if, if you're buying a Super Famicom specifically because, like, you really like how it looks or you just want it because it's super cool, 
or you want it because you want to play Japanese games with it. Um, you know, Super Famicom is a great choice, but it's easier to use. Like if you want to use Japanese and American cartridges on the same system, like an American Super Nintendo is easier to do that with because all you have to do is open up the cartridge slot use pliers to wiggle out the tabs that are in the back of the cartridge slot and then Super Famicom carts will fit it. You can't do the same thing with a Super Famicom with American cartridges because American cartridges have a bulkier build, a slightly bulkier, boxier. They're literally, you know, they're rectangular. Um, they, they won't go into the curved, the curved sides of the Super Famicom cartridge slot prevent American cartridges from going into it. Whereas, oh, um, go to the cat. Oh, he's, you know, he's in the, the castle. Curves fit fine to the American cartridge slot. Gr Grimmy Dragon says, "Go to the castle." Yeah, yeah. I was, I'm already. I'm going there. I just didn't know if he was in a. Uh, so, so yeah, the the uh, Super Nintendo is more versatile than the Super Famicom. Um, in that sense. Like you would definitely need some kind of adapter. I'm I'm actually not too up on what like the adapters are these days. Producing man says Super Famicom uses 50 frames per second max. Right? No, you're, that's the European, the European Super Nintendo, which looks. I mean, the European Super Nintendo has the same body as the Super Famicom. You know, the the American system is the one that looks different. But, um, so it, it looks like a Super Famicom, but it's called Super Nintendo in Europe, just like it's called here. But it looks like a Super Famicom. But, no, it's the European that's, you know, 50 hertz. You know, so th there's really no downside to a Super Famicom compared to an uh, American Super Nintendo, other than the fact that you would need an adapter to play American cartridges. But otherwise, they're they're equally good. In fact, the uh, system that I had Voltar install um, his new mod on. Okay, that's I mean, you have to go back to that's that's the launch thought. Super Famicom. That's what I thought. I, I thought I had. I, I was like thinking I had to go back to 1000 because I that's what, like where I just remember seeing him. Oh, don't you have to go 1000 to get yes, Melchior yeah, yeah, to but I was still in 600. Like I, I, that's what I was going to do. Wait, is he in 600 or is he in 1000? He's in 1000. That's what, well, I, mean, that's I, what I, that's what I thought. One. Matt D says, I have an EverDrive Star Rod, Super Famicom 7 SNES. Yeah, and I, I have a, I have an SD2 SNES that is Super Famicom shaped. So, you know, it's very, you know, it's no problem for me to use that with my, um, you know, the, 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 my newly modded Super Famicom. But yeah, I, I basically, I, you know, I, I would go ahead and buy the system that you want to buy. Um, but if you don't have a good means of connecting that system, I, I, I would recommend just like watching, you know, watch like our RetroTink 5X video and see if that seems like it's something for you or the RetroTink 2X video. Are RetroTink 2X is still like readily available? Uh, I don't know. I, I've honestly lost track of like whether he uh, still actively produces and sells that model. Okay, Eric says, yeah, you can just buy the 2X. So, yeah, like, retrofitting 2X with, e even if you're just using composite cables, the 2X makes a massive difference compared to, like, just directly connecting it to a TV, which is almost, like, irrelevant anymore because, like, you know, like, it used to be we would say, like, oh, this is better than directly connecting it to a TV. But now it's like you, you can't even connect it to a TV. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the mini is dead, unfortunately. I, I, I understand why, but I loved that. I, think, I just thought it was so practical. It was so easy to like, it, it was just 
for people who were like unsure, like, is this something I want to get into? Like, it was very, a very easy recommendation for like, hey, like, this is the least amount of money you can spend and get a good experience. Um, and, you know, you'll, you'll have a much better, you know, even if you're just using composite, it's much better quality compared to just directly playing into the TV. You know, it looks great with S video. If you, if you know your main concern is like N64, it's you know, it's it's so much easier to uh, you know it's it's the, the cheapest way to get a good experience with N64 on a on a modern TV. Um. So yeah, uh, you know, but go ahead and buy the system you want to buy, and you know if you and then you know and look look at some of those videos and see if. They seem like something you want to get into, you know. If you if you do get, you know, a RetroTank 2X, I, I would recommend the HD RetroVision cables for your Super Famicom. Um, if you get a 5X, I would recommend uh, like the Insurrection Industries mm -hmm. SCART cable for your Super Famicom. All right, let me get to the overworld here now. Call it. I mean, I probably that's gotta get the rock, but that takes a whole bunch of time. To... I, I I can say that um, you know I, I see some you know, some people saying oh Scar's dead, and someone saying you know um, yeah, Scar's still alive and kicking. Um, you know I I will say that like you know in the the group chats I've got going on with like the other people who are testing Retro Tink uh, uh, 4K. Um, that it seems SCART has been easier to dial in, like the the you know the precision uh, optimized settings. Right. So you know that is. Oh wow! I for I totally forgot. You gotta do the whole sixty five thousand BC stuff. You come here before you even fight Magus. Yeah. You wow, have your full basically your full party because, I mean, I guess he doesn't join you right away, anyways, but. Oh, yeah, I mean, it's a long time until he joins you. But you have your whole party. Yeah, it's like, like it's like after, like, the 12,000 BC part. I think it's 12,000? Yeah. I forget exactly what it is. I think it's 12,000. I, I mean, I just what? think about, like, so Firebrand X did that, uh, like, put out a tweet where he's like, here's a picture of, like, Final Fantasy VII with, through the 4K with using SCART. And here's one using the uh, PS1 digital, and like they were identical. Like I could not even yeah. tell. I couldn't tell a difference at all. Yeah, it was it was absolutely insane. Like how. Yeah. But he achieved that by using optimized sampling. Yeah, and and scar right. Oh, we got a namer here. Oh boy, here we go. Um, here we go. What's it gonna be? Asla. Uh, uh, oh, I kind of like Asla. Or Axla. I, I like Asla. I mean, that's to be stupid. <laughs> Asla sounds too cool. Byla. Um, uh, Ika? Ima? Oh, hang on. I, I have to admit, if we're, just changing, if we're just changing the A's, so it counts if you... Are we changing just that same letter? It says the A at the beginning and end. Because I am totally all about Bilb. <laughs> Bill. <laughs> I, I I'd be okay with Bilb. Bilb. Yes, I I like I like Bilb because okay, that, that's going... make, I mean Aka. I I, going... I I it's it's got to be Bilb because it's Bilb. Oh wait, Bilb. I'm I'm okay with Bilb. Wait, wait, wait! You you wrote vibe. Oh, oh, you got Bilb. yeah, yeah. Bilb. I'm I'm okay with Bilb. Bilb. Yeah, Bilb, Bill. It's it's your boy Bilb. Bilb you know, Bilb I don't know. Baggins. Like, isn't isn't the name of uh, Samwise's horse Bill? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think uh, I don't know. I thought I don't know where I I've heard the name Bilb, but I Bilb. I, I but I like Bilb. It's 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 me, Bilb. <laughs> it's a me, Bilb. You gotta be Bilb. Bilb. Be Bilb. Bilb like. I mean, I, I love the idea of like someone's Bil name Bilb being Bilb like Chromo. 
<laughs> yeah, we can call him Bill for sure, but I just like, ooh, it's Bilb. <laughs> Bill before I pull my subscription. <laughs> Bilb like Chromo. <laughs> oh, Bilb. <laughs> Get away from her, Chromo. I think she likes you, Chromo. Oh, brother. Oh, Luba, Bilb. <laughs> Bilb respects strong people. <laughs> Bilb. Blasphemous names. Luba. <laughs> Bilb. I love it. <laughs> I just like the, the idea of <laughs> it being Bill with a B. Or this name Bill, like, instead of, like, you know, someone's name is Bill, B-I-L-L, -L, but it's just spelled B-Y-L. <laughs> Bill. 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 Chromo come. <laughs> I, I feel like, like, every time we stream an RPG going forward, like, this has to be our thing. It's gotta be stupid names. Or well, we like, got we gotta do the adjacent change one letter to an adjacent letter. Yes, it has to be kind of stupid. Yeah, and it it can be uh, it can be two letters as long as it's like the same letter. Yes, it can be two letters as long as it's the same letter. Yes. So like, if we I mean let, let, let's see like let's let's say we do. Uh, <laughs> Final Fantasy VI sometime. Like, what, what, what can we do for, for Terra? Um. If we do the R, that'd be Tekka yeah, or Tika. Tessa. Tessa. I just like the, the idea that there's the like the A, the, it'd be like the term, GoBots ter term. versions. <laughs> Like, if we if we if we change turb? the A to B, it'd be it'd be turb. Turb. Ooh. Oh. oh. Turb. Wait, you just been turbed. <laughs> turb. Marm makes me think of Little Women. Is that is that like an actual short character named Marm? Marme. <laughs> Chromo and build. <laughs> I don't know. If I if I ever see a character named Bill in something, I'm gonna say. I'm gonna think Bilb from now on. <laughs> Bilb Baggins. There we go. So it at this point, like Magus is the only character we don't have, right? Yeah. We've never met, so what? What could what could he be? Nagus, L Lagus. Um. Mathis. Just named everyone butts. <laughs> Just named everyone butts. I wonder. If, I wonder if you could do that. Actually, can you rename characters in five other than other than <laughs> maggots, mag, mags, ma <laughs> bagus? I kind of like I kind of like Mathis. <laughs> it, it, ma Mathis or ma Mahas? <laughs> <laughs> we want we want to play more next Sunday. Uh, uh, it's not my turn next next week, but I mean, I could see. Maybe I would. I mean, it depends on how crazy this week is. Because, like I said, I'm, I, have to, I have to go to Florida on Tuesday, and I'm back on Friday night. Tudes Day. I'm going to go to Naples and, you know, for, for work, but I, I always get sent there because I have family there. That was fun. That was fun. Yeah. I'm, glad, I'm glad everyone enjoyed it, especially with the uh, with the stunt double names. <laughs> I just like I love that idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
Are, are you going to laugh every time you boot up Chrono Trigger and see see yes. these names on your file? And you know that they're you're, all you're, uh, uh, all you've caps. Like preloaded too. joy into your life in the future by creating this file. Yes, every time. You know, isn't that a wonderful about thing it. to think about? Although you know, as as much as uh, oh, is there one more? Oh, there was uh, one more. From Robert Hernandez. Sorry about oh, that. Hopefully you're still here. I, I don't know. I, I feel like I looked at, I, I checked the Super Chats like much less than 17 minutes ago. I guess we really, <laughs> really got on a on a ramble there. Sorry about that. Uh, Say so thank you for the weekly stream. My son really enjoyed watching Corey play. Maybe one day he'll have the attention span to play classic RPGs. Uh, yep. we, can, we can only, we can only dream. Yes. Hope so. You know, it's it's amazing the amount of kids that would say Cr- Chrono Trigger sucks. I'd rather play uh, Skibbity Toilet in <laughs> in Roblox. I mean, my my son is like obsessed with Skibbity Toilets. Does anybody in the? I mean, I talked about it a couple of weeks ago. I think. Is anybody in the in the chat familiar with Skibbity Toilets? It's seriously like. It's like a game in Roblox, and it's like, uh, yeah, Skibbity Toilet, but it's 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 no, there's no Y in it. There it is, S K I B I D I Toilet is the is the Gen Z killer, <laughs> and it's, it's called Skibbity Toilet. And you know what? what? Uh, someone in our, uh. <laughs> Discord like posted a like a backpack you could buy and it said Skibbity Toilet on it and it had like the character sk- the Skibbity Toilet it's like a head coming out of a toilet. Oh my gosh! And I I don't remember exactly what they said, but they posted a picture of, <laughs> picture of that backpack and said, "I guess this is where we are as a society now." <laughs> <laughs> I, I I wonder like like is Skibbity Toilet like. The most popular Roblox thing right now? Basically, yeah. I mean, if they're making backpacks of it. I guess so. No, cool stuff. Not cool. Thank you, Shadow Mask. But, um... <clears throat> but anyway... Anyways, uh, yeah. thank you to everybody who uh, tuned in tonight, everybody who donated. Uh, I hope that everyone has a wonderful week. Like I said, I'm going to be traveling for a few days, so uh, I mean that that I, I got pro- progress will be halted on on the uh, on the setup tour video, but that's because I, 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 got, uh, I got a start on the script for the accessories video. Yeah, yeah, I started uh, like kind so of. Hopefully, you can you can get going on it too. Like I, I don't. Like I don't really know the order. I don't even know if like everything that we have like on our list yeah. will even make it into the file video. But yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll I just I'll I just want to get a start on, and that, well. that that's like going to be the main thing that I'm going to be working on in the coming days is just like yeah, just so it can be out like next week, like early. When, yeah, it needs to be out next week. Yeah, you're you're not going to have a lot of time with. Um, yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not super concerned with it though. Yeah, okay. Well, just I mean, if if we make uh, it so that do some each... writing, do some writing when you have time. Yeah, I mean that's what I'm planning on doing. But also, I mean, if we just like make each of our parts like a total of like twelve to fifteen minutes, like that's oh yeah 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 great length. We, we need to we need to keep it reined in. Yeah. Anyways, uh, I hope everyone has a great week, and we'll see you next week. Good night. Good night. <laughs>